Oh, yeah. And now, our feature presentation. The door of Islam has always been open to everyone who desired to accept it, but today it is different. The door of this religion is now being closed against the white race, which has repeatedly rejected Islam, made mockery of it, persecuted and killed the prophets and the believers, the followers, hid and concealed the truth of it and its God. Allah, who is the God of the universe and Islam, his only religion, they follow the poor teacher of Islam seeking a way or an excuse to kill him. They put spies, stool pigeons on him to try to find a way to charge him with something other than the truth in order to do him evil for the truth's sake that he teaches. As David says in his Psalms 94:20, Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee, which frameth mischief by a law? The poor lost found members of the tribe of Shabazz, nicknamed Negroes by their slave masters, can well understand that they are the victims of such a frame up against them throughout America when they seek truth, love, and unity among themselves. The white race does not want to see the poor black people of America united in Islam, a religion that is of Allah, God, backed by the spirit and power of God to unite all of its believers into one nation of brotherhood. It is the only unifying religion known and tried by the races and nations of earth. This the white race knows. They were offered Islam by Musa, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, and many other prophets, but they rejected it. And certainly we raised in every nation an apostle saying, Serve Allah and shun the devil. So there were others against whom error was due. Therefore, travel in the land, then see what was the end of the rejectors. Holy Quran 1636. The prophets had delivered to them the message of truth and shown them the right way, but they chose to remain in error, evil doings. This stands true of this people today. They know the truth and right from wrong, but they like wrong or evil better than right. Therefore, they are against Islam and its truth. The Holy Quran says, Surely we have revealed to you as we revealed to Noah and the prophets after him, and we revealed to Abraham and Ishmael and the tribes and Jesus, Job and Jonah, Aaron, Solomon, and we gave to David a scripture. We sent apostles as the givers of good news and as warners so that people should have not a plea against Allah after the coming of the apostles. Four. 163165. The messengers of Allah, God, bring good news to the people, but if that good news is rejected, therefore they are warned that bad news will come. The Christian white world, whose leader and teacher is the Pope of Rome, the father of the church, claims that Jesus brought a new religion to them, but the scripture of both Bible and Holy Quran denies such false charge and makes Jesus' religion the same as the prophets who were before him. Muhammad was also given the same religion of Jesus and the prophets before him. The Holy Quran further says, Surely those who believe and those who are Jews and the Christians and the Sabians, whoever believes in Allah and the last day and does good, they shall have their reward from their Lord, and there is no fear for them, nor shall they grieve. 2. 6. 2. The religion of Islam is everything that we need for salvation. The poor black man is waking up to this truth and is coming into Islam by the thousands, against the wishes of the whites because of the love and unity and universal friendship which Islam brings to the believers. This is what the poor black man of America needs more of, true friends. He gets them in Islam. The white race has and still is trying to keep us from having true friends among our own kind or even among ourselves here in America. Because of the truth of Islam, they are now charging that it fans hate against them. The white race's false claim to be divine chosen people. 
According to the Bible, Genesis 3, 20, 24, Adam and his wife were the first parents of all people, white race only, and the first sinners, according to the word of Allah. He was driven from the garden of paradise into the hills and caves of West Asia, or as they now call it, Europe, to live his evil life in the West and not in the holy land of the East. Therefore, the Lord God sent him Adam forth from the Garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden three bims, Muslim gods, and a flaming sword, which turned every way to keep the devils out of the way of the tree of life, the nation of Islam. The sword of Islam prevented the Adamic race from crossing the border of Europe and Asia to make trouble among the Muslims for 2,000 years after they were driven out of the Holy Land and away from the people for their mischief-making, lying, and disturbing the peace of the righteous nation of Islam. The Holy Quran says, But the devil made them both fall from it and caused them to depart from that state in which they were. And we said, Get forth, some of you, being the enemies of others, and there is for you in the earth an abode and a provision for a time. The time here refers to the limited time of the Adamic race. The time is 6,000 years. According to the above verse 236, they were driven out because they were the enemies of the people of the garden. In these words, get forth, some of you, being the enemies of others. The others cannot refer to any others than the people of the garden, the Muslims. The Adamic race is still the enemy of the Muslims, the black man. Nevertheless, Allah did not deprive the Adamic race right guidance through his prophets, whom they persecuted and killed. The Adamic white race's history is proof that they are the enemies of God and the righteous, for they never did sincerely accept the prophet of God. Can they now claim to be the chosen race of God? Why would God limit their time of rule? Why did God send his prophets to warn them that he was going to destroy them? Holy Quran 714. He said, The devil respite me until the day when they are raised up. Those that are referring to being raised up refer to the resurrection of the black man into the knowledge of the white race as being the devils, the enemies of Allah, God, and the black nation. He, as the devil said, Thou hast cast me to remain disappointed. I will certainly lie in wait for them in thy straight path. Holy Quran 7.16 What Allah disappointed the devils in was the limiting of their rule over the nations and making it manifest to the world of black men that they are the enemies and great deceivers of the righteous. The white race is not and never will be the chosen people of Allah God. They are the chosen people of their father, Yaqub the devil. Prayer service. Prayer in Islam. Surely prayer keeps one away from indecency and evil, and certainly the remembrance of Allah is the greatest force, and Allah knows what you do. Holy Quran 2945 Surely the best way to strive to be upright in a sinful world is to pray continuously to the one true God whose proper name is Allah for guidance. As we are generally sinful and easily yield to temptations, it is only fitting to keep up prayer. Allah, the one true God, has blessed us with the universe, a sun to shine and brighten up the heavens, giving light for us to see, warmth enabling us to live and causing vegetation to grow and all life to exist. We reside on the planet through His will, so why should we not pray and continuously thank Him for this privilege? He it is who created the atmosphere for us to breathe. He it is who created all good vegetation for us to eat, plus the fowl and other animals which we partake of daily. He it is who created the beautiful atmosphere in which we live, in which we with our own hands mutilate and destroy for lack of proper guidance. We cannot improve upon the nature in which Allah, God, has created all beautiful things, yet we try. 
We cannot substitute the original beauty with artificial creations. Yet we try. So let us realize the power of Allah, that without Him we cannot exist, and make obeisance to Allah through our prayers to Him. Prayer is obligatory in Islam, the true religion. And remember Allah's favor upon you and the convent which he made with you when you said, We hear and we obey. And fear Allah. Surely Allah knows well what is in our minds. O ye who believe, be steadfast in the cause of Allah, bearing witness in equity, and let not a people's enmity incite you to act otherwise than with justice says the Holy Quran, be always just, that is nearer righteousness, and fear Allah. Surely Allah is aware of what you do. Allah has promised those who believe and do good deeds that they shall have forgiveness and a great reward. Holy Quran 8.10 we owe our very lives to Allah, the Lord of all the worlds. Why should we not thank Him? Our every good thought we owe to Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. Surely, as often as we sin, we turn to Him in prayer. He is most merciful and grants us pardon. And oft times we drift back again to some other flaw. For this we must turn to Him again, asking to be forgiven. Surely Allah knows what is in our hearts, and what is more, He is off forgiving. He it is who is the all-perfect one, who knows our imperfection, and pardons most through His Messenger. Remember, and the best way for remembrance of Allah, God, is through prayer. The five prayers of the day are spiritual refreshments, and he who cleanses himself in and out leaves no filthiness. It would be an insult to invite his Lord's Holy Spirit into a house, the outside of which was filthy. Why should we not pray five times a day to our Maker since we feed our bodies three times a day? What is so important that would keep us away from prayer to the originator of the heavens and the earth? Let us give praises to our God and submit ourselves to the Lord of the worlds and learn how to pray the right prayers in the right manner. Let us serve the one true God, whose proper name is Allah, in the right state. My Lord, make me to keep a prayer, and my offspring too. Our Lord, accept the prayer. Our Lord, Grant thy protection to me and to my parents and to the faithful of the day when the reckoning will be taken. The prayer of the Muslims will get you an answer. The Significance of Prayer O oh, you who believe, remember Allah, remembering Him frequently and glorifying Him morning and evening. He it is who sends His blessings on you, and so do His angels, that He may bring you forth out of utter darkness into the light, and He is merciful to the believers. Prayer is better than sleep. Holy Quran 33, 41, 43. This alone is salvation, just to be brought out of the darkness of ignorance into the light of the truth. Who is in more need of the truth than the American so-called Negroes, who do not have the knowledge of self nor of anyone else, and who love those who hate them and spitefully use them? O oh, Prophet, surely we have sent you as a witness, and as a bearer of good news, and as a warner, and as one inviting to Allah by His permission, and as a light-giving torch. Holy Quran 33, 45, 46. Come to success. Prayer and obedience to Allah will bring you success. The prayer is recited standing erect with face towards the east, with hands raised and declaring to the one God, Allah, that he has turned himself to Allah, God, the originator of the heavens and earth. This prayer and positions are especially designed and worded for those lost sheep, the so-called Negroes, who have been lost from the knowledge of their God and people, and now declare that they are turned again to their God, Allah, and are upright to Him. Imagine a native Muslim who never was lost from Allah and His people in the Holy Land or Holy City reciting the above prayer. 
The prayer has been turned into the wrong direction. He is in the west, looking again due east, confessing his faults for going astray from his God and people, and declaring that he has been unjust to himself. He confesses his faults and declares that none can grant him protection from his faults but Allah, God. He further asks that evil morals be turned away from him and that he be guided to the best of morals. He is now leaving the infidels of the West who brought him into darkness and pleading to be guided to better morals. Surely we, the so-called Negroes, lost all of our good morals among the enemies of the West. The type of the so-called Negroes is given in many parables of the Bible. In fact, if the Bible is rightly understood, it is referring to none other than the so-called Negroes and their enemies, the chosen people of God to whom the God gave the firstborn convert, and even the Mukti Christ offered his life to restore the so-called Negroes again to their own kind. But the so-called Negroes are blinded with a picture of the Jews' salvation and cannot see their own selves in prophecy. They should shout with joy over the understanding that God has and is causing me to give them of the book. It is a prayer for forgiveness that Solomon advised you and me to make to Allah if we be lost from our own under the name of Israel. Second Chronicles 6, 36, 39. Solomon was a Muslim prophet and king. He and his father David were of the black nation. He advised us to pray toward our own land and toward the holy city Mecca, which he has chosen. In the parables of the prodigal son, which is one of the most beautiful, and of the lost sheep, it is or should be easier for the so-called Negroes to see that they are the ones referred to. It is with the turning toward his home and father's house to pray that the sins of the prodigal son were forgiven, and he was accepted by his father and restored to his rightful place among his brethren. It is the turning again of the lost found so-called Negro, the tribe of Shabazz, in prayer to Allah, their true God and his true religion, Islam, that they will be seated in heaven overnight at once. The enemy knows this as well as I. The prayer service is divided into two parts, one to be said in private and the other to be performed in congregation, preferably in a mosque. While the private part is meant simply for the development of the inner self of man, the public part has other ends as well in view, ends that indeed make the Islamic prayer a mighty force in the unification of the human race. In the first place, this gathering of all people living in the same vicinity five times daily in the mosque is a help to the establishment of healthy social relations. In the daily service, these relations are limited to a narrow circle to members of the same neighborhood, but the circle becomes wider in the weekly Friday service, which gathers together all Muslim members of a particular locality and becomes still wider in the two great Id gatherings. Thus, prayer promotes social relations between the different sections of the Muslim community. Far more important than this, however, is the leveling of social differences brought about by means of congregational prayer. Once within the doors of the mosque, every Muslim feels himself in an atmosphere of equality and love. Before their maker, they all stand shoulder to shoulder. The king along with his poorest subject, the rich arrayed in gorgeous robes, the beggar clad in rags. Nay, the king or rich man standing in a back row will have to lay his head, prostrating himself before God at the feet of a slave or a beggar standing in the front. There could be no more leveling influence in the world. Differences of rank, wealth, and color vanish within the mosque, and quite a new atmosphere, an atmosphere of brotherhood, equality, and love, totally different from the outside world, prevails within the holy precincts. To be able to breathe five times daily in an atmosphere of perfect peace, in a world of strife and struggle, of equality where inequality is the order of the day, and of love amid the petty jealousies and enmities of daily life is indeed a blessing. But it is more than a blessing, for it is the great lesson of life. Man has to work amidst inequities, 
amidst strife and struggle, amidst scenes of hatred and enmity, and yet he is drawn out of these five times a day and made to realize that equality, fraternity, and love are the real sources of human happiness. The time spent on prayer is not therefore wasted, even from the point of view of active humanitarianism. On the contrary, the best use of it is made in learning those great lessons which make life worth living. And these lessons of fraternity, equality, and love, when put into practice in daily life, serve as foundations for the unification of the human race and of the lasting civilization of mankind. In fact, the five daily congregational prayers are meant, among other things, to carry into practice the theoretical lessons of equality and fraternity for which Islam stands. And however much Islam may have preached in words the equality of man and the fraternity of the community of Islam, all this would have remained a dead letter had it not been translated into the everyday life of man through the institution of five daily congregational prayers. Muslim Prayer Service and its Meanings We must study the words and the different positions taken by the Muslim in his daily prayer. This helps us to understand better the true way to worship Allah, God. The following short prayer should be said by all darker people in America as it fits us so well. Our Lord, do not punish us if we forget or make a mistake. Our Lord, do not lay on us a burden as thou didst lay on those before us. Our Lord, do not impose upon us that which we have not the strength to bear, and pardon us, and grant us protection, and have mercy on us. Thou art our protector, so help us against the unbelieving people. Our prayer in the past was made to Jesus, the last prophet God sent to the Jews, according to the way we were taught. It is wrong to take Jesus or any prophet of God as his equal. We may pray to God in the names of the prophets, but not pray directly to the prophet. The sender, God, is greater than the sent. We have been away from our own people and native land so long that we no longer turn in the direction of home to pray. You follow the way of your enemies who are against Allah, God, and his religion, Islam, and all black mankind. You will be acting wisely to begin turning and traveling eastward to the God of our fathers. Otherwise, your prayers are hopelessly made to Jesus and to a God which neither you nor your teachers know anything of. According to the teachers of Christianity, no man has ever seen him nor can see him unless he dies. That is infidel teaching. Why are you representing something that no man has ever seen nor will see? a mystery God, unknown. Why are you praying to a dead prophet who, the infidel teachers claim, is now alive in heaven, sitting on the right side of his father, who is called a spirit, yet the son is not, for he has flesh and bones, and this flesh of the son, wounded two thousand years ago, does not heal, nor does it decay, according to the Christian's religion. This is the greatest falsehood ever told or the greatest mistake ever made. Such doctrine cannot be proved true. Most of such believers will try to contend that the spirit which they feel that the Christians worship and still there is no proof that God is something other than man for a spirit must have a base. Let us recite another prayer of the Muslim. Glory to thee, O Allah, and thine is the praise. Blessed is thy name, and exalted is thy majesty, and there is none to be served besides thee. I betake thee for refuge to Allah. But the scripture of both Bible and Holy Quran denies such false charge and makes Jesus' religion the same as the prophets who were before him. Muhammad was also given the same religion of Jesus and the prophets before him. 
The Holy Quran further says, Surely those who believe, and those who are Jews, and the Christians, and the Sabians, whoever believes in Allah and the last day, and does good, they shall have their reward from their Lord, and there is no fear for them, nor shall they grieve. 262. The religion of Islam is everything that we need for salvation. The poor black man is waking up to this truth and is coming into Islam by the thousands against the wishes of the whites because of the love and unity and universal friendship which Islam brings to the believers. This is what the poor black man of America needs more of, true friends. He gets them in Islam. The white race has and still is trying to keep us from having true friends among our own kind or even among ourselves here in America. Because of the truth of Islam, they are now charging that it fans hate against them. The white race's false claim to be divine chosen people. According to the Bible, Genesis 3, 20, 24, Adam and his wife were the first parents of all people, white race only, and the first sinners. According to the word of Allah, he was driven from the garden of paradise into the hills and caves of West Asia, or as they now call it, Europe, to live his evil life in the West and not in the holy land of the East. Therefore, the Lord God sent him Adam forth from the Garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden three bims, Muslim gods, and a flaming sword, which turned every way to keep the devils out of the way of the tree of life, the nation of Islam. The sword of Islam prevented the Adamic race from crossing the border of Europe and Asia to make trouble among the Muslims for 2,000 years after they were driven out of the Holy Land and away from the people for their mischief-making, lying, and disturbing the peace of the righteous nation of Islam. The Holy Quran says, But the devil made them both fall from it and caused them to depart from that state in which they were. And we said, Get forth, some of you, being the enemies of others, and there is for you in the earth an abode and a provision for a time. The time here refers to the limited time of the Adamic race. The time is 6,000 years. According to the above verse 236, they were driven out because they were the enemies of the people of the garden. In these words, get forth, some of you, being the enemies of others. The others cannot refer to any others than the people of the garden, the Muslims. The Adamic race is still the enemy of the Muslims, the black man. Nevertheless, Allah did not deprive the Adamic race right guidance through his prophets, whom they persecuted and killed. The Adamic white race's history is proof that they are the enemies of God and the righteous, for they never did sincerely accept the prophet of God. Can they now claim to be the chosen race of God? Why would God limit their time of rule? Why did God send his prophets to warn them that he was going to destroy them? Holy Quran 7.14 He said, The devil respite me until the day when they are raised up. Those that are referring to being raised up refer to the resurrection of the black man into the knowledge of the white race as being the devils, the enemies of Allah, God, and the black nation. He, as the devil said, Thou hast cast me to remain disappointed. I will certainly lie in wait for them in thy straight path. Holy Quran 7.16 What Allah disappointed the devils in was the limiting of their rule over the nations and making it manifest to the world of black men that they are the enemies and great deceivers of the righteous. The white race is not and never will be the chosen people of Allah God. They are the chosen people of their father, Yaqub the devil. Prayer service. Prayer in Islam. Surely prayer keeps one away from indecency and evil, and certainly the remembrance of Allah is the greatest force, and Allah knows what you do. Holy Quran 2945 
Surely the best way to strive to be upright in a sinful world is to pray continuously to the one true God whose proper name is Allah for guidance. As we are generally sinful and easily yield to temptations, it is only fitting to keep up prayer. Allah, the one true God, has blessed us with the universe a sun to shine and brighten up the heavens, giving light for us to see, warmth enabling us to live and causing vegetation to grow and all life to exist. We reside on the planet through His will, so why should we not pray and continuously thank Him for this privilege? He it is who created the atmosphere for us to breathe. He it is who created all good vegetation for us to eat, plus the fowl and other animals which we partake of daily. He it is who created the beautiful atmosphere in which we live, in which we with our own hands mutilate and destroy for lack of proper guidance. We cannot improve upon the nature in which Allah, God, has created all beautiful things, yet we try. We cannot substitute the original beauty with artificial creations, yet we try. So let us realize the power of Allah, that without Him we cannot exist, and make obeisance to Allah through our prayers to Him. Prayer is obligatory in Islam, the true religion, and remember Allah's favor upon you, and the convent which He made with you when you said, We hear and we obey, and fear Allah. Surely Allah knows well what is in our minds. O oh, ye who believe, be steadfast in the cause of Allah, bearing witness in equity, and let not a people's enmity incite you to act otherwise than with justice, says the Holy Quran. Be always just, that is nearer righteousness, and fear Allah. Surely Allah is aware of what you do. Allah has promised those who believe and do good deeds that they shall have forgiveness and a great reward. Holy Quran 8.10 We owe our very lives to Allah, the Lord of all the worlds. Why should we not thank Him? Our every good thought we owe to Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. Surely as often as we sin, we turn to Him in prayer. He is most merciful and grants us pardon, and oft times we drift back again to some other flaw. For this we must turn to Him again, asking to be forgiven. Surely Allah knows what is in our hearts, and what is more, He is off forgiving. He it is who is the all-perfect one, who knows our imperfection, and pardons most through His Messenger. Remember, and the best way for remembrance of Allah, God, is through prayer. The five prayers of the day are spiritual refreshments, and he who cleanses himself in and out leaves no filthiness. It would be an insult to invite his Lord's Holy Spirit into a house, the outside of which was filthy. Why should we not pray five times a day to our Maker since we feed our bodies three times a day? What is so important that would keep us away from prayer to the originator of the heavens and the earth? Let us give praises to our God and submit ourselves to the Lord of the worlds and learn how to pray the right prayers in the right manner. Let us serve the one true God whose proper name is Allah in the right state. My Lord, make me to keep up prayer and my offspring too. Our Lord, accept the prayer. Our Lord, grant thy protection to me and to my parents and to the faithful of the day when the reckoning will be taken. The prayer of the Muslims will get you an answer. The Significance of Prayer O oh, you who believe, remember Allah, remembering Him frequently and glorifying Him morning and evening. He it is who sends His blessings on you, and so do His angels, that He may bring you forth out of utter darkness into the light, and He is merciful to the believers. Prayer is better than sleep. Holy Quran 33, 41, 43. This alone is salvation. 
just to be brought out of the darkness of ignorance into the light of the truth. Who is in more need of the truth than the American so-called Negroes, who do not have the knowledge of self nor of anyone else, and who love those who hate them and spitefully use them? O oh, prophet, surely we have sent you as a witness, and as a bearer of good news, and as a warner, and as one inviting to Allah by his permission, and as a light-giving torch. Holy Quran 33:45-46. Come to success. Prayer and obedience to Allah will bring you success. The prayer is recited standing erect with face towards the east, with hands raised and declaring to the one God, Allah, that he has turned himself to Allah, God, the originator of the heavens and earth. This prayer and positions are especially designed and worded for those lost sheep, the so-called Negroes, who have been lost from the knowledge of their God and people, and now declare that they are turned again to their God, Allah, and are upright to Him. Imagine a native Muslim who never was lost from Allah and His people in the Holy Land or Holy City reciting the above prayer. The prayer has been turned into the wrong direction. He is in the West looking again due east, confessing his faults for going astray from his God and people, and declaring that he has been unjust to himself. He confesses his faults and declares that none can grant him protection from his faults but Allah, God. He further asks that evil morals be turned away from him, and that he be guided to the best of morals. He is now leaving the infidels of the West who brought him into darkness and pleading to be guided to better morals. Surely we, the so-called Negroes, lost all of our good morals among the enemies of the West. The type of the so-called Negroes is given in many parables of the Bible. In fact, if the Bible is rightly understood, it is referring to none other than the so-called Negroes and their enemies, the chosen people of God to whom the God gave the firstborn convert, and even the Mukti Christ offered his life to restore the so-called Negroes again to their own kind. But the so-called Negroes are blinded with a picture of the Jews' salvation and cannot see their own selves in prophecy. They should shout with joy over the understanding that God has and is causing me to give them of the book. It is a prayer for forgiveness that Solomon advised you and me to make to Allah if we be lost from our own under the name of Israel. Second Chronicles 6, 36, 39. Solomon was a Muslim prophet and king. He and his father David were of the black nation. He advised us to pray toward our own land and toward the holy city Mecca, which he has chosen. In the parables of the prodigal son, which is one of the most beautiful, and of the lost sheep, it is or should be easier for the so-called Negroes to see that they are the ones referred to. It is with the turning toward his home and father's house to pray that the sins of the prodigal son were forgiven, and he was accepted by his father and restored to his rightful place among his brethren. It is the turning again of the lost found so-called Negro, the tribe of Shabazz, in prayer to Allah, their true God and his true religion, Islam, that they will be seated in heaven overnight at once. The enemy knows this as well as I. The prayer service is divided into two parts, one to be said in private and the other to be performed in congregation, preferably in a mosque. While the private part is meant simply for the development of the inner self of man, the public part has other ends as well in view, ends that indeed make the Islamic prayer a mighty force in the unification of the human race. In the first place, this gathering of all people living in the same vicinity five times daily in the mosque is a help to the establishment of healthy social relations. In the daily service, these relations are limited to a narrow circle, to members of the same neighborhood, but the circle becomes wider in the weekly Friday service, which gathers together all Muslim members of a particular locality and becomes still wider in the two great Id gatherings. Thus, prayer promotes social relations between the different sections of the Muslim community. Far more important than this, however, is the leveling of social differences brought about by means of congregational prayer. 
Once within the doors of the mosque, every Muslim feels himself in an atmosphere of equality and love. Before their maker, they all stand shoulder to shoulder. The king along with his poorest subject, the rich arrayed in gorgeous robes, the beggar clad in rags. Nay, the king or rich man standing in a back row will have to lay his head, prostrating himself before God at the feet of a slave or a beggar standing in the front. There could be no more leveling influence in the world. Differences of rank, wealth, and color vanish within the mosque, and quite a new atmosphere, an atmosphere of brotherhood, equality, and love, totally different from the outside world, prevails within the holy precincts. To be able to breathe five times daily in an atmosphere of perfect peace, in a world of strife and struggle, of equality where inequality is the order of the day, and of love amid the petty jealousies and enmities of daily life, is indeed a blessing. But it is more than a blessing, for it is the great lesson of life. Man has to work amidst inequities, amidst strife and struggle, amidst scenes of hatred and enmity, and yet he is drawn out of these five times a day and made to realize that equality, fraternity, and love are the real sources of human happiness. The time spent on prayer is not therefore wasted, even from the point of view of active humanitarianism. On the contrary, the best use of it is made in learning those great lessons which make life worth living. And these lessons of fraternity, equality, and love, when put into practice in daily life, serve as foundations for the unification of the human race and of the lasting civilization of mankind. In fact, the five daily congregational prayers are meant, among other things, to carry into practice the theoretical lessons of equality and fraternity for which Islam stands. And however much Islam may have preached in words, the equality of man and the fraternity of the community of Islam, all this would have remained a dead letter had it not been translated into the everyday life of man through the institution of five daily congregational prayers. Muslim Prayer Service and Its Meanings We must study the words and the different positions taken by the Muslim in his daily prayer. This helps us to understand better the true way to worship Allah, God. The following short prayer should be said by all darker people in America, as it fits us so well. Our Lord, do not punish us if we forget or make a mistake. Our Lord, do not lay on us a burden as thou didst lay on those before us. Our Lord, do not impose upon us that which we have not the strength to bear, and pardon us and grant us protection, and have mercy on us. Thou art our protector, so help us against the unbelieving people. Our prayer in the past was made to Jesus, the last prophet God sent to the Jews, according to the way we were taught. It is wrong to take Jesus or any prophet of God as his equal. We may pray to God in the names of the prophets, but not pray directly to the prophet. The sender, God, is greater than the sent. We have been away from our own people and native land so long that we no longer turn in the direction of home to pray. You follow the way of your enemies who are against Allah, God, and his religion, Islam, and all black mankind. You will be acting wisely to begin turning and traveling eastward to the God of our fathers, Otherwise, your prayers are hopelessly made to Jesus and to a God which neither you nor your teachers know anything of. According to the teachers of Christianity, no man has ever seen him nor can see him unless he dies. That is infidel teaching. Why are you representing something that no man has ever seen nor will see? A mystery God, unknown. Why are you praying to a dead prophet who, the infidel teaches claim, is now alive in heaven, sitting on the right side of his father, who is called a spirit, yet the son is not, for he has flesh and bones, and this flesh of the son, wounded two thousand years ago, does not heal, nor does it decay, according to the Christian's religion. This is the greatest falsehood ever told, or the greatest mistake ever made. Such doctrine cannot be proved true. 
Most of such believers will try to contend that the spirit which they feel that the Christians worship, and still there is no proof that God is something other than man, for a spirit must have a base. Let us recite another prayer of the Muslim. Glory to thee, O Allah, and thine is the praise. Blessed is thy name, and exalted is thy majesty, and there is none to be served besides thee. I betake thee for refuge to Allah. feel that the Christians worship, and still there is no proof that God is something other than man, for a spirit must have a base. Let us recite another prayer of the Muslim. Glory to thee, O Allah, and thine is the praise. Blessed is thy name, and exalted is thy majesty, and there is none to be served besides thee. I betake thee for refuge to Allah against the accursed devil. Study the words of the Muslim's prayer and try finding anything to equal them in any other religion. The Christians have no intelligent prayer service set forth in the Bible. There is no mention of God teaching Adam to pray. Jesus set forth only one prayer to his disciples and did not appoint any certain time to recite it. The following is the oft-repeated prayer of the Muslims. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, all praise is due to Allah, the Lord of the worlds, the Beneficent, the Merciful, Master of the Day of Requital. Thee do we serve and thee do we beseech for help. Guide us on the right path of those upon whom thou hast bestowed favors, not of those upon whom thy wrath is brought down, nor of those who go astray. Amen. What a good prayer for one who is lost from the right direction, as the so-called Negroes are to pray. They, the white race, cannot regain paradise because they are not members of that family. But on the other hand, the lost found so-called Negroes are really, by nature, members of the original family of paradise. It was by prayer and the turning in the right direction toward the holy temple Mecca that delivered Jonah from the belly of the fish, Jonah 2, Two, four, which is only a type of us here in America, the antitypical fish who has swallowed us. Our prayers will be speedily heard, and Allah will fight our battles against our enemies and bring them to disgrace. You're listening to a reading of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad's illuminating book, Message to the Black Man, page 141. Time of Prayer and its meaning. Note, the morning prayer is of two parts. The first part called Farad in Arabic, and the other part called Tradition, and it is made obligatory. The morning prayer being obligatory is called Farad, meaning the early morning. The great Mahdi has taken Farad as a name for himself corresponding with the time of his coming, which is in the early days or years of the 7,000 years. The early morning is the first part of the 7,000 years, and the year under the name Millennium, which the Christians say means the 1,000 years Christ will reign on the earth. This is the 1,000 years which it will take to restore peace and honor after the removal of peace breakers. This time also includes the birth of a new nation from the mentally dead. However, the name Farad fits the context. We are reminded that this prayer is made obligatory. It is also binding upon the believers, Muslims in Allah, God to obey him. For in that 1,000 years of millennium, the disbelievers will cease to be. And to those who live in that time, it shall be binding upon them to serve and obey one God. Farad Muhammad, the great Mahdi, or Allah in person, the Mahdi must restore the kingdom of Islam, and he must weed out from the kingdom of Islam all disbelievers. This he will do in his time. 
Farad is a name many of the scholars have said is not one of the 99 attributes, but still it is a name that is self-independent and one which means that the believers are obligated to obey. We can see clearly why he took this name, Farad, for himself. We are now living in the early morning of that 7,000 years. The world of evil was given 6,000 years to reign over the righteous. Now, since their time expired in 1914, as all the religious scientists agree, we are in the 7,000th year since the creation of Adam or the Caucasian race. It shall be binding upon you to serve and obey the great Mahdi, Farad Muhammad, or else be cut off from the people of righteousness. All praises due to our Lord and Savior, Master Farad Muhammad. To him do we submit. To him we fly for refuge from the evils of Yaqub civilization. And remember, the time that we are living in is the end of the world we have known and the coming in of the world of Allah the world of peace and security. Having this in mind, we must be mindful of the things that are written. The following verse warns the powers of this world that their like existed before, and Allah destroyed them. Travel in the land and see what was the end of those before. Most of them were polytheists. Holy Quran 30, 42. We read of the history of the flood that drowned the disobedient people who refused to take warning from Allah's prophet Noah. The following verse warns you and me, the so-called American Negroes, that after nearly 100 years, we have not been able to see that Christianity is not an upright religion. And it further warns us that on that day we will be separated. These days now approach you and me, so make a decision. Then set thyself being upright to the right religion before there come from Allah the day which cannot be averted. On that day they will be separated. Holy Quran 30, 43. Observe prayers in the early morning, at the close of the day, and at the approach of the night. Prayers are good deeds which drive away the evil doing. Holy Quran 11, 114. Glorify Allah by rendering prayer to Him when it is evening and in the morning. Praise to Him in the heavens and the earth and in the afternoon and at noontide. Ibid 3017. Put up then with what they say and celebrate the praise of your Lord before sunrise and before sunsetting. And during the night do thou praise Him and in the extreme of the day so that thou mayest be well pleased. Ibid. 20, 130. Observe prayers at sunset until the first darkening of the night, and observe reading the Quran at daybreak. Lo, the recital of the Quran, that is rendering prayer, is ever witnessed, and some part of the night awake for it, a largesse for thee. It may be that your Lord will raise thee to a praised state, a bid, 1778-79. Take aid by observing patience and prayer, a bid, 2. 45. When you have fulfilled your prayer, remember Allah standing and sitting and lying on your sides, and when you are in safety, then be steadfast in prayer. Verily, prayer is a timed ordinance on the believers. He bid 4. 103. That which leads man to infidelity is neglect of prayers. No one of you must say his prayers in a garment without covering the whole body. Allah accepts not the prayers of a woman arrived at puberty unless she covers her head as well as the whole body. The five stated prayers erase the sins which have been committed during the intervals between them, if they have not been mortal sins. The prayers of a person will not be accepted who has broken his ablution until he completes another ablution. Order your children to say the state prayers when they are seven years of age and beat them if they do not do so when they are ten years old. Tell me, if any one of you had a rivulet before his doors and bathed five times a day, therein whether any dirt would remain on his body. The companion said, nothing would remain. The prophet said, 
In this manner will the five daily prayers, as ordered by Allah, erase all minor sins. The lost found joins the righteous in prayer for the first time upon their finding by Allah. We see him turning himself to Allah to recite the prayer of the righteous. The presence of Allah is like the sun in all its brilliance on him in the early morning after long dreary night, and his first thought was to rise up and prepare for the day. We see him washing his hands in all the exposed parts of his body. We see him washing his face, his eyes, ears, mouth and nose, and even those wet hands go over his head to clean the very scalp because he is now turning for the first time to his God, Allah, and looking upon the presence of God and the light which he has shown upon him makes him to feel he was unclean and that he needed to clean up. Even the outer appearance is to be cleaned in the presence of God to hear his words of guidance. He stretches forth his hand while standing as erect as a soldier before his captain at attention. He has said that he has surely turned himself to Allah. He has taken an oath that he will not worship any god but Allah, and that his prayer, his sacrifice, his life and death are all for Allah. He has declared that Allah has no associate, and he is commanded not to set up any rivals with Allah. He is now ready to enter the prayer service of the nation of Islam and to recite the oft-repeated prayer. He closes his eyes against looking upon the world of evil and filth. He has washed his ears from the hearing of evil. He takes no more part in listening to the conversation of evildoers. He has washed his nostrils from even the smell of things offensive to the intelligent and decent society of righteousness. He has washed out his mouth cleansed it as far down his throat as water could go without strangling him. He washes his mouth from speaking of evil and planning evil and indecent things. He takes no more part in using his mouth and his tongue for the service of evil. Now, the mouth and the language his tongue utters are saying that which he believes will please Allah and the nation of righteousness. He has washed his hands in all exposed parts of his body. His hands are washed from taking part in evil and indecent doings. His feet are washed from the evil service of walking, standing, and sitting in the presence and path of the wicked. He cleans them to walk towards Allah and stand in his holy presence. His body garments are no more filthy but now made sacred to the service of Allah. We have heard him declare that Allah is the greatest and that there is no God but Allah. He declares none deserves to be worshipped beside Allah and that Muhammad is his last apostle. He has declared himself to be turning to the service of Allah and not pursuing the evils of the darkened west. He now looks eastward to behold the light of God and his people from whence he has strayed for the last 400 years. He now wishes to be guided on the right path of Allah. Thus he now recites the following prayer that is designed especially for him who was lost in the darkness of evils in the western world of the shaitans, devils of European origin. He now prays in the name of Allah and not to a mystery God that he nor anyone else has seen nor does such exist. Neither does he pray in the name of dead prophets. He now stands in the light and reality of Almighty God Allah, who appeared in the person of Master W.F. Muhammad. He recites the following. In the name of Allah, the Most Merciful, all praise is due to Allah, the Lord of the world, the Most Merciful Master of the Day of Requito. Thee do we serve, and thee do we beseech for help. O Allah, guide us on the right path the path of those upon whom thou hast bestowed favors, and not of those upon whom thy wrath is brought down, nor of those who go astray. Amen. As you notice in the above prayer, it is designed for one who has lost himself from the right path of Allah. He now wishes to be guided on that path the prophets walked in, upon the path that Allah has bestowed favors for those who walk thereon. He now desires favors divine favors to be bestowed upon him 
after being deprived of friendship and favors from those who walk in darkness of evil and murder. He desires not to walk in the path of those whom Allah dislikes and is angry with, and whom Allah has sent his curse upon in the past, and has recorded it in history for their own warning and as an example of what will befall them and those who willfully and knowingly go astray from his, Allah's path. He has declared Allah to be the final judge on the day of resurrection. This is Message to the Black Man by the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the Messenger of Allah. This reading continues on page 146. The Morning Prayer Surely I have turned myself being upright to him who originated the heavens and the earth, and I am not of the polytheists. Surely my prayer and my sacrifice and my life and my death are all for Allah, the Lord of the world. No associate has he, and this am I commanded, and I am of those who submit. O Allah, thou art the king, there is no god but thee. Thou art my Lord, and I am thy servant. I have been unjust to myself, and I confess my faults. So grant me protection against all my faults, for none grants protection against faults but thee. And guide me to the best of morals, for none guides to the best of them but thee, and turns away from me the evil morals but thee. The following brief prayer is, however, the one more generally adopted. Glory to thee, O Allah! Thine is the praise, and blessed is thy name, and exalted is thy majesty, and there is none to be served beside thee. I betake me for refuge to Allah against the accursed devil. A Muslim must say his prayers. When we say that we are Muslims, those who have submitted to the will of Allah, and then we must give praises to the one to whom we have submitted to do his will. If we are believers in the divine supreme being, we are always in need of his help one way or another. Therefore, it is necessary that we give praises to him and thanks and ask forgiveness for any wrongdoing on our part. Praising his name in the saying of prayers, pouring out the heart's sentiment before and to our divine supreme being shows submission and proves to the world that our life and our death are all for Allah. This above prayer is divided into two parts, one part called Farad and the other one tradition, or I should say it is tradition that the Muslims should pray and give praises to Allah. It is not something just started in the time of Muhammad 1400 years ago, but it has always been the righteous way to do, to pray and give praises to Allah. Prayer is something that we must and are compelled to do if we expect guidance and mercy from Allah. And Allah's using Farad as his name here on his coming teaches us that if we expect to be successful, we must bow in submission to the will of Master Farad Muhammad the all-wise God in person who is worthy to be praised and praised much. It is really the nature of the righteous to give praise and honor to Allah. The prayer is one of the greatest prayers that we can pray. Being lost from Allah and from our people and native land or country, we now turn ourselves to Allah. We live right to him who originates the heavens and the earth. But we must remember, we are taking an oath in this prayer that we will not accept any God but Allah. In the words, my prayers, my sacrifice, my life and death are all for Allah. We live for Allah. We die for Allah. We sacrifice all we have and our lives for Allah and his cause. Let the Muslims and hypocrites who read this teaching taught in the above prayer know that we have taken an oath with our life to live for Allah and sacrifice everything we have for Allah and that we will even die for Allah. This will be held against us on the day we shall meet Allah 
who turns back on their heels and you who become hypocrites, read, study, and learn the prayer above and recite it. If you are believers as often as you can and know that you have fled to Allah and have taken refuge in him against the accursed devils. The devils were cursed from the day they were created or grafted until this day and a doom was fixed for them. You are not blind to the knowledge of the devil. You know who the real devil is today. As the Holy Quran gives it to you and me, they are our open enemies, that race which is called the Caucasian race or the European white race. The preparations and its meaning. One, the washing and cleansing of all exposed parts of the body of filth and uncleanliness to stand and bow before the Lord of the world. Two, the rinsing out of the mouth, the impure and evil that the mouth is guilty of speaking. Three, the washing of the hands that are subject to the handling of clean and unclean things. They are cleansed to be spread before Allah, the Lord of the world. The Holy Quran says that our hands will bear witness against the evildoers on the day of resurrection. They will say, O hands, why hast thou borne witness against me? The hands will say, As Allah makes everything to bear witness, so has he made us to bear witness. Whatever we do, every member of our body plays a part in it. 4. The feet are washed up to the ankles if they were exposed. The feet should be washed once every day, even though one wears shoes. 5. A total bath should be taken if there were sexual relations. He is now ready for prayer. He stands erect with his face and body towards the rising of the sun, the east, in the direction that the earth is rotating and all the planets. In this direction is the holy city of Mecca, the only holy place on the earth. From this direction do we look for Allah God and his angels to come to judge the world. Six, he lifts his opened hands and his thumbs pointing towards his earlobes. He says, Allah is the greatest. Twice, I bear witness that none deserves to be worshipped besides Allah. Repeat it twice. And that Muhammad is his last apostle. Twice, the regular prayer caller in the minarets of the mosque calls the prayer from four directions, east, west, north, and south. He repeats, Allah is the greatest, four times. Seven, he begins his prayer by saying, Surely I have turned myself to thee, being upright to him who originated the heavens and the earth, and I am not of the polytheists. Surely my prayer, my sacrifices, my life, and my death are all for Allah, the Lord of the worlds. No associate has he, and this am I commanded. O Allah, thou art the king. There is no God but thee. Thou art my Lord, and I am thy servant. The meaning. First, the cleansing of the body before asking prayer to the most honored and wisest person in the universe, the Lord and King over all, none is his equal shows respect for him. He desires to show in words, in his prayer, that his words are clean and coming from a clean heart. Should not that clean heart be a clean body? If one is offered clean water in an unclean outer surface of a glass, will he accept it? This is so with a Muslim. He believes in cleanness, internally as well as externally. The different positions taken in prayer. Standing erect to address our superior is proper and again it shows respect and honor. The raising of the hands with the palms open in the same direction shows an act of surrender to the King of Kings and Lord of the world and is coming before him with clean and emptied hands. The hands, the most active members of our bodies, play the part of evil and good for the body. They sometimes bear witness for or against us. The Muslims declare that there is only one God 
and none deserves to be worshipped except him. This is true. Almost all religious persons acknowledge that there is but one God who made the heavens and the earth. The Muslims declare in one of their prayers that they worship Allah, God, in the best manner, in the direction east in which he turns himself towards the holiest of places, and one day the whole of the people of earth will be just as holy or holier. I would say holier. This position also has another meaning. It refers to the lost and found people of Islam. Before their return, they must turn in this direction with clean hands and hearts, bow in submission to the will of Allah alone with righteousness, that they may be welcome to take their place again among their own people. This shall soon be made clear to my people here, that if holy war be declared, no so-called Negro could return to his native land and people unless he or she accepts Allah as his God and Islam as his religion. O oh, you who believe, enter into submission one and all, and do not follow the footsteps of the devil. Surely he is your open enemy. Holy Quran 2, 208. Here the Muslim is about to begin his prayer. He has cleansed all the exposed parts of his body, washed out his mouth, nose, and ears, standing upright with his face towards the holy city Mecca, which is in the direction of sunrise. He lifts his cleansed hands up beside his head with the thumbs towards the lobes of his ears and declares that Allah is the greatest four times and that nothing deserves to be worshipped but Allah. What better preparation could have been made for the service of our God? With due respect and great honor, he is turned in the direction of sunrise in which our planet is carrying him at a speed of 1,037 and a third miles per hour. Physically, he has turned his face in the direction in which he is traveling and in which he looks forward to the light of day. From the same direction sunrise came all the spiritual light, the holy prophets, the holy land, and the holy cities of the earth. With his cleansed hands open, with the palms toward the holy land and cities, he signifies an open confession of his internal purity and entire submission to the will of Allah, God. Whatever evils he has committed with his hands by washing them with the water of life, he shows forth his heart's repentance for the evils that his hands have committed. Now, as the open cleansed hands show forth a sincere surrender to their maker without concealing or hiding anything, so it is with the heart that only Allah God can see into is clear of the evils and desires forgiveness. For such evils have been washed from the heart, the ears from hearing them, and the eyes are closed to keep out the evil morals, for none can turn away from me the evil morals but thee. The above prayer is preferred as the morning prayer, but can be said by the individual any time that he likes. Here the prayer declares that he is strictly a believer in one God who originated the universe, the heavens and earth, and not in three, and further declares that his sacrifice, life, and death are all for Allah God, and to him does he submit. He acknowledges his sins and asks protection against them, or rather, against a future sin. The opening. The Fatiha opening is the first chapter of the Holy Quran and constitutes the Muslim's prayer for guidance. Here is the prayer we shall recite. In the name of Allah, the Most Merciful, all praise is due Allah, the Lord of the world, the Most Merciful Master of the Day of Requital. Thee do we serve, and thee do we beseech for help. O Allah, guide us on the right path, the path of those upon whom thou hast bestowed favors, and not of those upon whom thy wrath is brought down, nor of those who go astray. Amen. This prayer is found in the first surah, chapter, of the Holy Quran, and is the opening of every surah of the Holy Book, except the ninth chapter, the chapter of the hypocrites. 
He seeks the right guidance. He does not want to walk in the path of the Jews and Christians. He saw the Jews go astray from the right faith and caused the wrath of Allah to descend upon them and caused the Jews to suffer many afflictions and finally the loss of world independence. And they fell into the hands of their enemies wherever they shall join. And now take notice of those who call themselves Christians going astray from the right path, Islam. Notice them going to the extreme by worshiping Jesus, first by falsely accusing Jesus of being the Son of Allah, God, born without the agency of man, thus accusing God of an act of adultery. They preach the rightful laws of God, but practice the laws of Satan, and now have become the world's greatest troublemakers, war makers, and have caused the nations to deviate from the path of Allah, God. And now they are heading the entire world into total destruction. He wants to be guided on the path of the prophets of Allah, where he can receive the favors of Allah. He has not as yet entered the congregational prayer service in the beautiful mosques of the Holy Land of Islam to hear the caller of the faithful early in the morning and five times a day from the minarets of the mosque. The caller with his hands raised to his ears goes from one door or window to the other. There are four in all. He opens it to the east, west, north, and south, saying, Allah Akbar, four times, which means Allah is the greatest regardless of what direction you may look. The beautiful words one may note from the caller at nearly the end of the call are these. Come to prayer, turning the face to the right, repeat it twice. Come to success, repeat it twice, and turning the face to the left. Prayer is better than sleep, repeat it twice. The touch of Islam makes the lost found have a sense of dignity, and for the first time he feels that he should do something for self, and he desires to rid himself of the things that hinder him. He therefore now prays the following prayer. O oh Allah, I seek thy refuge from anxiety and grief and I seek thy refuge from lack of strength and laziness, and I seek thy refuge from cowardice and niggardliness, and I seek thy refuge from being overpowered by debt and the oppression of men. O Allah, suffice thou me with what is lawful to keep me away from what is prohibited, and with thy grace make me free from want of what is besides thee. We, the lost founds, should repeat the above prayer seven times a day, for it sums up our greatest hindrance to freedom and self-independence. We must get away from the idea of depending on others to do for us what we can do for self. Fear, cowardice, and laziness are our greatest enemies. We are brave enough to fight to preserve the white race's independence, but not brave for self and kind. Shake such shackles off and face the consequences like men, and we all will be free. Knowledge of Prayer Since learning of the prayer service of Islam, the religion of entire submission to the will of Allah, we see him now not only trying to keep his internal parts clean, but the external parts too. He washes his face, his hands, and all the exposed parts of his body before going to prayer. Never before has he done such under the cross, Christianity. Prostrating himself with his shoes off and his forehead kissing the rug or the bare earth in praises and humble submission to the will of Allah God. He says again in the above prayer that he is thankful to Allah. He thanks Allah for the knowledge of words to say, to know him to be the true God, to believe in and worship him alone, and not to set up a rival to him. No more is he ungrateful to God as he declares in the following words, We are not ungrateful to thee. He no longer befriends an enemy of Allah. While under the cross Christianity, he befriended the enemies of God, thinking he was getting the favor or friendship of God by loving and befriending every creature, whether of the righteous or the devils. In reading the above prayer, 
we find him forsaking and casting off the ones who do not obey Allah. He is now in accord with the teachings of the Quran, the holy book of Allah, and in accord with the teachings of Jesus and the prophets. We will not find any believers in Allah, God, who will befriend and show friendship to the enemies and disbelievers of Allah, though they be their near of kin, says the Holy Quran. And the Quran 64 gives us an example in Abraham, who forsook his father and declared that enmity and hatred had appeared between them until he believed in Allah alone. The Bible again puts it in Jesus' words, Luke 14:26 as he says to the disciples that they must even hate their mothers and fathers and sisters and brothers or they could not be his followers. But here today in making and casting off the ones who do not obey Allah, he is now in accord with the teachings of the Quran, the holy book of Allah, and in accord with the teachings of Jesus and the prophets. We will not find any believers in Allah, God, who will befriend and show friendship to the enemies and disbelievers of Allah, though they be their near of kin, says the Holy Quran. And the Quran 64 gives us an example in Abraham, who forsook his father and declared that enmity and hatred had appeared between them until he believed in Allah alone. The Bible again puts it in Jesus' words, Luke 14:26 as he says to the disciples that they must even hate their mothers and fathers and sisters and brothers or they could not be his followers. But here today in America, as you may know, the Christians teach that we should love everybody. This is just the deceitful way of the devils to get love and honor from the people of God under their religion, Christianity, that they organized in order to oppose the true religion of Allah. Islam. He now further says and acknowledges that he prays to Allah alone and make obeisance as it reads in the words of the prayer as follows. O Allah, thee do we serve and to thee do we pray and make obeisance. He seeks refuge in no other God but Allah and he declares this in the following words of the prayer. Thee do we flee and we are quick. He now hastens himself for refuge in a living God, a God that exists, a God he can depend upon for help, a God who knows and understands all of his life's troubles and woes. He is not perfect, therefore he hopes for mercy from the true God in the words of the prayer as follows. We hope for thy mercy and fear thy chastisement. He has learned of the suffering and chastisement of Allah upon those who disbelieve in him. He is no longer an unbeliever, for he has surely turned himself being upright to Allah, the originator of the heavens and the earth. Prayers to pray. O Allah, we beseech thy help and ask thy protection and believe in thee and trust in thee, and we love thee in the best manner. And we thank thee, and we are not ungrateful to thee, and we cast off and forsake him who disobeys thee. In the above prayer, we learn that the whole of the Muslim prayer, as Mawvi Muhammad Ali says, is only a declaration of divine majesty and glory, divine holiness and perfection, and of the entire dependence of man on his maker. Preface of the Holy Quran. If you would only adopt the sayings of the Muslim's prayer, you would be helped. Of all the praying people on earth, the Muslim's worship to God is in the best manner. The words used in their prayers are the best and most humble. They cast off and forsake those who disobey Allah, God. The Christians teach love for the enemy because of the fact that they are really the enemy and desire to mingle with you for the purpose of misleading you. It is nothing but right to sever friendly relations with those who do not care to serve and obey Allah, God. There are many Muslims and black Christians who, for the sake of certain privileges, do not carry into practice the casting off of those who disobey Allah, God, and think it is a sin for the true righteous Muslim to do so. Today I am often asked, can white people attend your service? When told that white people are not Muslims, 
Some of the ignorant Muslims falsely charge me in their writings and sayings as not teaching Islam. They also falsely charge that my teachings not only do not represent Islam, but that it is not recognized by the Muslim world. This is just what the enemies of Islam and the so-called Negroes of America desire that the so-called Negroes believe. They sow such lies in the hearts of the weak Muslims and the so-called Negroes in general. You are going to be greatly surprised. I have Allah, God, on my side to bring my people out of the darkness and power of our enemies. Is he not God sufficient? And most surely he is with me and I with him. You most certainly will be the loser if you are not on our side. The Lord's Prayer, as it is called, contains some words that should not have been written there, such as, lead us not into temptation. God will not lead us into temptation. It is the devils that tempt us to sin. The above words show a lack of confidence in God. To lead us aright, that he must be reminded just how to lead us. Another is, give us this day our daily bread. Here again, the words, this day, could lead one to believe that on that day the prayer was given, there was a shortage of bread, or that the Christian's prayers seek their physical bread first and spiritual bread last, even though the Bible says, you must seek the kingdom of heaven, and all those things shall be added unto you. Luke 12, 31. In another place it says, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Matthew 4.4 4. These scriptures are contrary to the prayer, although it stands true of the Christians who seek bread, swine's flesh, the poison, whiskey, wine, and beer first, and pray for spiritual food last. The Bible shows, Exodus 16.2.3.8, that it was the want of bread and meat, first of all, that gave Moses and Aaron much trouble trying to lead the people into the spiritual knowledge of Jehovah and self-independence. They even said when they were hungry, Would to God we have died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt? Exodus 16.3. Oft times they angered Moses and Aaron by their longing for the food of their slave masters even while on their way to freedom and self-independence. The Muslims pray in their oft-repeated prayer to seek Allah's help in guiding them on the right path, the path of those whom God has favored, and not on the path of those who have caused his anger to descend upon them, the Jews and Christians. This want of the slave master's bread, meat, and luxuries is depriving the so-called Negroes today of their independence. O oh Allah, we beseech thy help and ask thy protection. We believe in thee and trust in thee. We worship thee in the best manner, and we thank thee. We are not ungrateful to thee, and we cast off and forsake him who disobeys thee. O oh, Allah, thee do we serve, and to thee do we pray and make obeisance. To thee do we flee, and we are quick. We hope for thy mercy, and we fear thy chastisement, for surely thy chastisement overtakes the unbelievers. We now see the lost found members of the great black nation, the original people of the sun, are greatly improving their prayer services and obedience to Almighty God, who in the person of Master Farad Muhammad founded them and to whom praises are due forever for bringing us Islam, the knowledge of God, our friend, and the devil, our enemy. To my people in America who bow in submission to Allah's will, he declares he will set us in heaven at once on our acceptance of him as our God. Money, good homes, and friendships in all walks of life. Read for yourself the promised reward and blessings prophesied in the Bible and Holy Quran for us who turn to Allah in the last days of the world of the infidels. We have been looking toward the east from the direction the light of truth has come, and we have been reading for the past few weeks on the prayers made by the lost found members, so-called Negroes, of the great nation of Islam, and we are getting more knowledge of how to serve Allah in the best manner. As the above prayer reads, we worship Allah in the best manner. Remember 
as we grow into the knowledge of Allah, the more we desire to serve Him faithfully and give praises to Him. We hear the lost found repeat the above words as follows, O Allah, we beseech Thy help. For the first time, he is calling on Allah for help. Before being found, however, he had lifted his eyes into space and called on the God that the enemy infidels had directed him that actually does not exist. And he found no help coming to him from out of space. But today, this prayer bears witness since the coming of Allah in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, to whom be given praise forever, that he receives help from God. He received no protection from the God somewhere above the sun, moon, and stars that the enemy pointed out to him and the rest of the poor lost found members of the Asiatic nation, the nation of Islam. The lost found received no help or protection until the appearance of Allah in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, to whom praises are due forever. We hear him say now that he asks Allah's protection and believe in thee, Allah, in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, to whom all praises are due forever, and trust in thee. He is confident today. He now puts his trust in Allah, who he knows will answer his prayers. As the Holy Quran teaches him, Allah hears the prayers of the believers. He worships Allah now in the best manner. We are not ungrateful to thee, and we cast off and forsake him who disobeys thee, even though they be his near of kin. A true believer will not befriend a disbeliever in Allah. A prayer for the messenger. The following prayer is for the messenger of Allah. O Allah, make Muhammad successful and the true followers of Muhammad successful, as thou didst make Abraham successful, and the true followers of Abraham successful. For surely thou art praised and magnified in our midst. Allah, bless Muhammad, and the true followers of Muhammad, as thou didst bless Abraham, and the true followers of Abraham. Surely thou art praised and magnified in our midst. In the above prayer, the believers of the lost and found members of the great nation pray for the messenger whom Allah, God, has raised among them, a guide to the lost and now found path of Allah. For four hundred years they have been wandering in darkness, blinded by the touch of Satan, the devil. But now the light of Allah has shone upon them, and they have turned themselves now to Him, and they have submitted to Allah to do His will, being blessed as the Jews and the Arabs were to have a messenger born in their midst to teach and guide His people into the spirit and knowledge of His teacher, Almighty God, Allah, in person. The believers are not satisfied with prayers and seeking refuge in Allah without asking a word of prayer for the success and blessings of Allah upon the messenger and his followers whom Allah has so abundantly bestowed upon them. The answer to Abraham's prayer, that he raise the messenger from among them, that he may teach the wisdom of the book Bible to so many of them who do not understand the very book Bible in which they think they believe, but without the true knowledge or understanding of the scriptures of Moses and Jesus. Therefore, a correction must come to them in the way of true understanding of these scriptures in which their history is constantly referred to in the mentioning of the Jews and Christians through the prophets that were sent to them. The Orthodox Muslims think this refers to Arabia and that Muhammad, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, of nearly 1400 years ago was the one fulfilling the answer to Abraham's prayer. But... If they look at it again and ponder over it, it is like their belief in thinking that Muhammad of nearly 1400 years ago was a prophet like Moses, that Moses prophesied in Deuteronomy 1818, but they forget 
that Moses was a man who was raised in the house of bondage under a king who held him and his people in bondage to him and to his false worship of God and religion. And he desired no one to interfere with his teachings, giving to his slaves. His fear, according to the Holy Quran, was that Moses would change the religion. The Orthodox Muslims think this was fulfilled in the Meccanin's opposition to Muhammad. Not so. He does not compare with the prophecy of a man like Moses. For there was no king singled out who opposed Muhammad in Mecca. There was no separation of the Arabs from any slave masters and a destruction of the slave masters. It was a certain class of people of science. The Meccadans were not enslaved to any physical king and people, only to false belief. But remember that prophecy, like unto me, the man had to be one who received a revelation or guidance from Allah to physically liberate a people from the physical holding of a superior force or ruler. He must fight with this particular ruling class to release his people like Moses. Then he must give them their own religion, teach them the knowledge of the true God, Allah, and his true religion, Islam, and set up a completely new religious service never known to his people before. He must overcome them with nothing but the truth and the power and guidance of Allah as Moses did with Pharaoh and his well-armed army because he is not in a position to arm himself and his followers with carnal weapons. The enemy controls the manufacturer of arms. He must be one like Moses dependent upon Allah for the victory over his enemy. Here he shows forth in a land where Allah has not been worshipped and where Islam has not been accepted as the true religion. The power of Allah is shown by letting Allah fight his and his people's battle against their wicked opposers. This is the true type of a man like Moses. If you study the prophecy concerning the last messenger of Allah, according to the description given to the man by the Bible's prophecy in the Torah and Gospel, you will find that he is a man according to the Psalms with the name of Muhammad. And also you will find him in the revelations under the symbolic name Lamb. He gets the name praised from the honor of the 24 elders or Islamic scientists. The position that he is shown under the symbolic lamb in Revelations is like the Holy Quran's teaching one who is illiterate and whom the people will find written down in the Torah and the Gospel, the book of Isaiah, the parables of Jesus. This is the man the above prayer is made for because he, as one of the Islamic writers says, will be born among the infidels. The revelations of the Bible symbolically place him in the midst of four beasts. Therefore, Prayer must be made for his protection among a people without the teachings of Islam, not a country where never had any former prophets of Allah risen and set up signs of the future greatness of Islam, as had Arabia in the time of Muhammad. The signs of the future of Islam and its last messenger, Abraham, had already been set up in the holy city Mecca. Muhammad did not destroy these signs, but rather he repaired the sign to live until it had served its purpose. Confidence gained through prayer. The following prayer shows the complete confidence the apostle and his followers have in Allah and the great praise of Allah for his protection and blessings that they enjoy from him daily. I seek the protection of Allah, my Lord, from every fault and turn to him. O oh Allah, thou art the author of peace and from thee comes peace. Blessed art thou, O Lord of glory and honor. Nothing deserves to be worshipped except Allah. He is one and has no associate. His is the kingdom and for him is praise. And he has power over all things. O Allah, there is none who can withhold what thou grantest and there is none who can give what thou withholdest. And greatness does not benefit any possessor of greatness as against thee. Let you and me who believe learn and recite this prayer for the glory and honor, praise and thanks to Allah who is blessing us, the lost found of our people, for guiding us on the right path. That we too may be as successful as the prophets and their followers before us. We must remember that we cannot be proud over greatness. Only Allah. For if Allah makes you great, you are great indeed. And if Allah bring you low, none can raise you up but he. 
Salvation has come to us from Allah. Let us rejoice in Him and be thankful to Him for visiting us and accepting us as His own. O you who believe, take not the Jews and the Christians for friends. They are friends of each other. And whoever amongst you takes them for friends, he is indeed one of them. Surely Allah guides not the unjust people. Holy Quran 5.51 To Allah belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is in the earth. And whether you manifest what is in your minds or hide it, Allah will call you to account according to it. So he forgives whom he pleases and chastises whom he pleases. And Allah is possessor of power over all things. Holy Quran 2, 284. The messenger believes in what has been revealed to him from his Lord. And so do the believers. They all believe in Allah and his angels and his book and his messengers. We make no difference between any of his messengers. And they say... We hear and obey. Our Lord, thy forgiveness do we crave, and to thee is the eventual course. Holy Quran 2, 285. Allah imposes not on any soul a duty beyond its scope, for it is that which it earns of good, and against it that which it works of evil. Our Lord, punish us not if we forget or make a mistake. Our Lord, do not lay on us a burden as thou didst lay on those before us. Our Lord, impose not on us afflictions which we have not the strength to bear, and pardon us and grant us protection, and have mercy upon us. Thou art our patron, so grant us victory over the disbelieving people. Holy Quran 2, 286. Note, the latter verse 2, 286, is a prayer. Let us recite it very often. You are listening to a reading of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad's illuminating book, Message to the Black Man, page 161. Program and position. What do the Muslims want? This is the question asked most frequently by both the whites and the blacks. The answers to this question I shall state as simply as possible. One, we want freedom. We want a full and complete freedom. Two, we want justice. Equal justice under the law. We want justice applied equally to all, regardless of creed, class, or color. Three, we want equality of opportunity. We want equal membership in society with the best in civilized society. Four, we want our people in America whose parents or grandparents were descendants from slaves to be allowed to establish a separate state or territory of their own, either on this continent or elsewhere. We believe that our former slave masters are obligated to provide such land and that the area must be fertile and minerally rich. We believe that our former slave masters are obligated to maintain and supply our needs in this separate territory for the next 20 or 25 years until we are able to produce and supply our own needs. Since we cannot get along with them in peace and equality, after giving them 400 years of our sweat and blood and receiving in return some of the worst treatment human beings have ever experienced. We believe our contributions to this land and the suffering forced upon us by white America justifies our demand for complete separation in a state or territory of our own. Five, we want freedom for all believers of Islam now held in federal prisons. We want freedom for all black men and women now under death sentence in innumerable prisons in the North as well as the South. We want every black man and woman to have the freedom to accept or reject being separated from the slave master's children and establish a land of their own. We know that the above plan for the solution of the black and white conflict is the best and only answer to the problem between two people. Six, we want an immediate end 
to the police brutality and mob attacks against the so-called Negro throughout the United States. We believe that the federal government should intercede to see that black men and women tried in white courts receive justice in accordance with the laws of the land or allow us to build a new nation for ourselves dedicated to justice, freedom, and liberty. Seven, as long as we are not allowed to establish a state or territory of our own, we demand not only equal justice under the laws of the United States, but equal employment opportunities now. We do not believe that after 400 years of free or nearly free labor, sweat and blood, which has helped America become rich and powerful, so many thousands of black people should have to subsist on relief or charity or live in poor houses. 8. We want the government of the United States to exempt our people from all taxation as long as we are deprived of equal justice under the laws of the land. 9. We want equal education, but separate schools up to 16 for boys and 18 for girls on the conditions that the girls be sent to women's colleges and universities. We want all black children educated, taught, and trained by their own teacher. Under such school system, we believe we will make a better nation of people. The United States government should provide free all necessary textbooks and equipment, schools and college buildings. The Muslim teachers shall be left free to teach and train their people in the way of righteousness, decency and self-respect. 10. We believe that intermarriage or race mixing should be prohibited. We want the freedom of Islam taught without hindrance or suppression. These are some of the things that we the Muslims want for our people in North America message to the black man page 163 one we believe in the one God whose proper name is Allah two we believe in the Holy Quran and in the scriptures of all the prophets of God three we believe in the truth of the Bible but we believe that it has been tampered with and must be reinterpreted so that mankind will not be snared by the falsehoods that have been added to it. 4. We believe in Allah's prophets and the scriptures they brought to the people. 5. We believe in the resurrection of the dead, not in physical resurrection, but mental resurrection. We believe that the so-called Negroes are most in need of mental resurrection. Therefore, they will be resurrected first. Furthermore, we believe we are the people of God's choice, as it has been written that God would choose the rejected and the despised. We can find no other persons fitting this description in these last days more than the so-called Negroes in America. We believe in the resurrection of the righteous. Six. We further believe in the judgment. We believe this first judgment will take place as God revealed in America. Seven, we believe this is a time in history for the separation of the so-called Negroes and the so-called white Americans. We believe the black man should be freed in name as well as in fact. By this we mean that he should be freed from names imposed upon him by his former slave masters names which identified him as being the slave of a slave master. We believe that if we are free indeed, we should go in our own people's names, the black peoples of the earth. Eight, we believe in justice for all, whether in God or not. We believe as others that we are due equal justice as human beings. We believe in equality as a nation of equals. We do not believe that we are equal with our slave masters in the status of freed slaves. We recognize and respect American citizens as independent peoples and we respect their laws which govern this nation. Nine, we believe that the offer of integration is hypocritical and is made by those who are trying to deceive the black peoples into believing that their 400 year old open enemies of freedom, justice and equality are all of a sudden their friends. Furthermore, 
We believe that such deception is intended to prevent black people from realizing that the time in history has arrived for the separation from the whites of this nation. If the white people are truthful about their professed friendship toward the so-called Negro, they can prove it by dividing up America with their slaves. We do not believe that America will ever be able to furnish enough jobs for her own millions of unemployed in addition to jobs for the 20 million black people. 10. We believe that we who declared ourselves to be righteous Muslims should not participate in wars which take the lives of humans. We do not believe this nation should force us to take part in such wars, for we have nothing to gain from it unless America agrees to give us the necessary territory wherein we may have something to fight for. 11. We believe our women should be respected and protected as the women of other nationalities are respected and protected. 12. We believe that Allah, God, appeared in the person of Master W. Farad Muhammad, July 30th, the long-awaited Messiah of the Christians and the Mahdi of the Muslims. We believe further and lastly that Allah is God, and besides Him there is no God, and He will bring about a universal government of peace wherein we can live in peace together explanation of what Muslims want and believe. I would like to put a little emphasis on some of what the Muslims want. If we ask you, meaning the white American slave master, for freedom indeed, I think that we are right. We use the words indeed as we have been your subjects for now 400 years. That is a long time to be subject to a people or the slave of a people. Three hundred of those years we worked for you for nothing. And those three hundred years we were treated like your own herd of cattle. You have no regard for our human rights, no more than you did your animals. You slashed the backs of my fathers and my mothers without any mercy. You killed them whenever you felt you wanted to, and you sweethearted with my grandparents. Truth hurts. You went into our grandmothers, had children by them, and then put them on the block for sale. And today, you are still crossing over to our women. This should show you why we want to take leave of you today. In those days, you sold her children, who were your own sons and daughters. I am telling you what my own grandparents told me. My father's mother told me her father was a white man, and she looked it. Today our women are all subject to your bidding. You take their sons and bash their brains in with your club and blow their brains out with your gun throughout the country without due process of the law that you already put here before them. You have in words trodden us under the foot in the name of civilization, and now today you stand as our chief adversary to prevent us from escaping your evil and unjust doings to our people whose sweat and blood has helped to build the greatest country and government on the earth. You are so rich today that you are able to feed almost every mouth in Europe. You are so rich that you can now give away billions of dollars to nations in order to get their friendship. You are so powerful that you can command the high seas, the air, the land, even the ice caps of the poles of the earth. All this we helped you do. Some of us went to your wars, shooting down your enemy as you pointed them out to us, and we were being shot down also. If we cry out for justice, you twist it and make it look as though we are the real enemies of justice. If we say that you are evil, you want to make a case against us for falsely accusing you when you know that you have never been good to us. Today, you are trying to deceive the poor once servant slaves of yours by telling them that you will now show a little friendship. I will let you ride beside me on my best transportation. I will also allow you to work in my office. I am going to put you in the government. What is that going to do for us and our children 
in the future. Will this help us to make a great future for our people and own what you still own, which is a place we can call our own? Why hinder us? Your dog is more classified as a citizen in the land than we so-called Negroes. If the dog wants freedom, if the dog whines in the night because he is uncomfortable, you will get up and try to comfort it. But if you hear a million Negroes crying and suffering from the brutal treatment at your hand and the hand of your people, you will laugh. I am here with the truth. Take the words, turn them over, and examine them. Put them on the scale of facts and weigh them. And if I am not teaching you the truth, I say come up here and prove it, and I will lay down my head on the floor and let you chop it off. We want freedom indeed. Why shouldn't we not want to leave a people who have lynched and burned us? Why continue to send our own brother out there falling under the blows of so-called peace officers and falling from a bullet from his gun? I have seen police vex our people to try and make them say something so they can beat or kill them. You say you want to help us? Help us to do what? If you do not want to help us leave you with a good send-off, then what are you going to help us do if we stay here? I have lived with you all my life. I was born in the South. I have looked upon the evil treatment of our people day and night. I have shed tears for you many times. No justice whatsoever. I have seen people kicked about who ask for a fair salary. I have heard it said to a brother, You take what I say. You don't figure behind me, nigger. We are 20 million people who have come, according to the old prophets, through toil and tribulations. We are here today asking for equal justice under your own law. We are asking for freedom that you claim you have given to us. Freedom to do for ourselves. We do not want to be beggars, but if we are given freedom indeed, we can build for ourselves the same things that you have. Our people who are educated in your colleges and universities, our technicians and engineers of all kinds, why shouldn't they go and make a way for their own people as a nation, build and construct a government for their people as your fathers did for you when they crossed the Atlantic? They may be a little lazy and want to start and make them say something so they can beat or kill them. You say you want to help us? Help us to do what? If you do not want to help us leave you with a good send-off, then what are you going to help us do if we stay here? I have lived with you all my life. I was born in the South. I have looked upon the evil treatment of our people day and night. I have shed tears for you many times. No justice whatsoever. I have seen people kicked about who ask for a fair salary. I have heard it said to a brother, you take what I say, you don't figure behind me, nigger. We are 20 million people who have come, according to the old prophets, through toil and tribulations. We are here today asking for equal justice under your own law. We are asking for freedom that you claim you have given to us. Freedom to do for ourselves. We do not want to be beggars, but if we are given freedom indeed, we can build for ourselves the same things that you have. Our people who are educated in your colleges and universities, our technicians and engineers of all kinds, why shouldn't they go and make a way for their own people as a nation? build and construct a government for their people as your fathers did for you when they crossed the Atlantic. They may be a little lazy and want to start at the top first, but you were not able to start at the top. 
you have put it in their minds that they cannot go for themselves. How educated were your fathers when they crossed the Atlantic and started working for their freedom? They were not wise politicians and senators as you are today, but nevertheless they kept digging and turning the soil, felling trees, pacing the country for a place for themselves. Today they have made a nation. They were not satisfied with trying to do this alone. They had to go across the Atlantic and get our fathers to help them. If you wanted to be your lily white self, why did you go and get black people to come here? Why would you mix your blood with the black people and yet deprive them of equal justice? We built your railroads with our own sweat. We plowed your farms and plantations. We cut down the underbrush and trees. And now today you have replaced that kind of labor with mechanical labor and you do not have anything for us to do. With just two or three men you can cultivate hundreds of acres of land with machine operations. You pick your cotton with a mechanical machine. Everything is done mechanically today. Why don't you want us to leave you? Especially when you do not want us to do anything but labor. Why shouldn't we want some of this earth where we can start building a government for the future of our people so that they will not be just a people who labor year after year for another people and all their labor still be subject to the brutal treatment? You should be ashamed of yourself today to lynch and kill so-called Negroes while you have an army full of Negroes helping you to fight and protect and maintain the government. You should be ashamed of it, especially when the same man's father slaved for your fathers for nothing. And now you will go and take him before your own judges and give him an unjust judgment? This is a sham. Do you think you are going to get away with it forever? We say, Allah is God. We say in Arabic language, Allahu Akbar. We say in the Arabic language, La ilaha el Allah, Muhammad Rasul Allah. We that say that in your midst today should make you tremble and go off and commit suicide. Those babies crying in the name of Allah, they were never taught by you to worship. You know that your time must be short. Today, I say you see all of these things. Hear all of them as the Bible teaches even of being plagued with divine plagues and you still will not worship the God of truth and justice? The white race has never believed in God, not the God of freedom, justice, and equality. The man of sin does not want to hear the poor so-called Negroes who are under your feet. He does not want them to seek help from God because he is guilty and he knows he has mistreated us. We called on the God that you said was the right one for a long time. For a hundred years we have been calling on your God and the Son both. I am sure today that God and his Son that you are presenting to us have been for white people. Surely they were not friends of ours. He never heard us. He must have been off somewhere in conversation over your future and did not have time to hear our prayers. But Allah hears, Allah acts. Never any more will you fool us to bow and pray to a dead Jesus any more than Moses or any other dead prophet and hope that my people believe that there is a Jesus killed and buried but still sitting receiving their prayers. I hope that they wake up and know that they haven't been heard since the day he was killed. Those who represent that Jesus to you do not wait for Jesus to answer their prayers. They answer their own prayers. Get out of that kind of stuff. There is no such thing as dying and coming up out of the earth, meeting your friends and meeting those who died before you. I say, get out of such slavery teachings. It keeps you blind, deaf, and dumb to reality. Get out of it, for if you depend on such, you will not believe in yourself. When you are dead, you are dead. I have proof of that. Do you have proof of that, what you say? They will come back? 
No, I say to you, my friend, the mentally dead are awakening. Your slave masters have deceived you. They want you to remain deceived. They hate any one of you that will try to teach facts. They hate any one of you that want to become equal. They hate any one of you that want justice. They do not want that. Yet, they will tell you that they want to help you and they want to give you justice. You do not get it. We want freedom, indeed, and we want to be human beings along with other humans. We want the world to know that we love to be respected as other people who are now being respected. I say to you, my beloved, freedom indeed is what we want. Freedom to do for ourselves as we think best. That is what they, white race, are fighting for themselves, to be free to do as they want to, and they are fighting to the death for it. You and I should fight to the death to be free to do what we want. You know and I know how much these people hate me because I am teaching the truth. And they know I am doing a better job with you than any one of those who ever appeared among you. If the white circle leaders want to keep their circle white, I say keep it white. If the Ku Klux Klan want to keep their race white, I say help yourself, go to it. Now when I say to keep mine black, white circle league German Nazi, keep your mouth out of it. We want to build a nation that will be recognized as a nation that will be self-respecting and receive respect of the other nations of the earth. I say we have a God that will make a place here for us. What the Muslims want for the whole black nation of our people is freedom, justice, and equality. That is what we want for you. We cannot exercise or enjoy freedom, justice, and equality unless we have a home on this earth that we can call our own. A program for self-development. We must remember that we just cannot depend on the white race ever to do that which we can and should do for self. The American so-called Negroes are like the Bible story of Lazarus and the rich man, the story that Jesus must have foreseen at the time. This Bible beggar was charmed by the wealth of the rich man to whom he was a servant, and he could not make up his mind to go seek something for self. This beggar was offered a home in paradise, but could not make up his mind to leave the gate of his master, the rich man, wishing for that which God had in store for destruction along with its owner. The beggar's eyes could not turn from that perishable wealth. So it is with the American Negroes. They are charmed by the luxury of their slave master and cannot make up their minds to seek for self something of this good earth. Though hated and despised by the rich man and full of sores caused by the evil treatment of the rich man. On top of that, he is chased by the rich man's dogs and still remains a beggar at the gate. Though the gates of paradise were ever open to him and the gates of hell were open to receive his rich master. The American Negroes have the same gates of paradise open to them, but are charmed by the wealth of America and cannot see the great opportunity that lies before them. They are suffering untold injustices at the hands of the rich. They have been and still are being lynched and burned. They and their women and children are beaten all over the country by the rich slave masters and their children. The slaves' houses and churches are bombed by the slave masters. Their girls are used as prostitutes and at times are raped in public. Yet the Negroes are on their knees begging the rich man to treat them as the rich man treats himself and his kind. The poor beggar kindly asks for the crumbs, a job and a house in the neighborhood of the rich man. The Negro leaders are frightened to death and are afraid to ask for anything other than a job. The good things of this earth could be theirs if they would only unite and acquire wealth as the masters and the other independent nations have. The Negroes could have all of this if they could get up and go to work for self. They are far too lazy as a nation, 100 years up from slavery, and still looking to the master to care for them and give them a job, bread, and a house to live in on the master's land. 
you should be ashamed of yourselves. Surely the white race has been very good in the way of making jobs for their willing slaves, but this cannot go on forever. We are about at the end of it and must do something for self or else. The slave master has given you enough education to go and do for self, but this education is not being used for self. It is even offered back to the slave masters to help them to keep you a dependent people looking to them for support. Let us unite every good that is in us for the uplifting of the American so-called Negroes to the equal of the world's independent nations. Ask for a start for self, and the American white people, I believe, are willing to help give us a start if they see you and I are willing to do for self. It will remove from them not only the worry of trying to give jobs and schools to a lazy people, but also would get them honor and sincere friendship all over the Asiatic world, and God himself would prolong their time on the earth. We must stop relying upon the white man to care for us. We must become an independent people. So-called Negroes should. 1. Separate yourselves from the slave master. 2. Pool your resources, education, and qualifications for independence. 3. Stop forcing yourselves into places where you are not wanted. 4. Make your own neighborhood a decent place to live. 5. Rid yourselves of the lust of wine and drink and learn to love self and your kind before loving others. 6. Unite to create a future for yourself. 7. Build your own homes, schools, hospitals, and factories. 8. Do not seek to mix your blood through racial integration. 9. Stop buying expensive cars, fine clothes, and shoes before being able to live in a fine home. 10. Spend your money among yourselves. 11. Build an economic system among yourselves. 12. Protect your women. Stop allowing the white men to shake hands or speak to your women anytime or anywhere. This practice has ruined us. They wink their eye at your daughter after coming into your home, but you cannot go on the north side and do the same with his women. No black man feels good by nature seeing a white man with a Negro woman. We have all colors in our race, red, yellow, brown, and jet black. Why should we need a white person? Africans would not dare allow their women to be the targets that we allow ours to be. If I were not protected by Allah, God, how would I be able to stand before this white man, unafraid, and speak as I do? You educators, you Christian ministers should stop preaching integration. The most foolish thing an educator can do is to preach interracial marriage. It shows the white man you want to be white. Educators should teach our people of the great history that was theirs before they were brought to America in shackles by slave masters. Our children should be trained in our own schools, not dropped into the schools of the enemy where they are taught that whites have been and forever will be world rulers. I am the first man since the death of Yaqub, commissioned by God directly. I say no more than what Jesus said. He said that he came from God. I say that I am missioned by God. Put Muslim program to Congress. Ever since the 30s, America has been struck by drought and dust storms. The outlook is for hail and snowstorms great flooding rains, earthquakes, terrific cold and ice. These blasts of the elements will ruin crops, highways, railroad tracks, bridges, and street pavements. The Holy Quran prophesizes Allah sending a calamity to destroy crops and generally plague man. It could be locusts, insects already here. If they were multiplied into unlimited numbers, they would terrify man and drive him to destruction. The members of the black nation who refuse to believe and submit to the truth will be burdened with overwhelming grief and hounded by bitter regret. 
they will find no relief or rest day or night. The things of which I have spoken will come upon America and its people within the next six years. You will separate yourselves automatically when these things come to pass before your eyes. Who can be saved, you will ask? The Muslim believers who have submitted to the will of Allah and his religion, Islam, and those who faithfully followed and obeyed his messenger. Let us try to do something for ourselves. Give praises to Allah for converting the people to me and blessing us with peace and security. Allah is one God. He is independent and has no need of us, but we have great need of him. It is he the prophets predicted would come in the last days of the world, seeking us, the lost people, to save us and restore us to our own. I declare to you that he has come in the person of Master Wallace Farad Muhammad by 1. A summary of his work for the past 33 years and 2. By the messenger who believes in what has been revealed to him by his Lord as do the believers. They believe in Allah and his prophets and his books. We make no distinctions in his messenger. We hear and we obey. It is difficult for me to advise my followers on taking part in the corrupt politics of our enemies who are in complete control of the political affairs. There are many black men and women who make splendid politicians. They could accomplish considerable good if they, like the white politicians and his people, were given proper and equal recognition and justice for themselves and their people. If our politicians are to serve us, they must have no fear of the white man when they plead our case in the white courts before white judges. The strongest politician of our kind, or the person who comes nearest as far as I know to giving us political justice in the white courts, if he had our complete backing, is Congressman Adam Clayton Powell, Jr., though he is not a Muslim. A Muslim politician is what you need, but Congressman Powell is not afraid and would not be easily bribed, for he is not hungry. There are two other good politicians but I will not mention them by name at this time. If they could shed their fear, they would make excellent political leaders to guard our interest. We must give good black politicians the total backing of our population. Your program, the one I have given you which is carried in the first part of this chapter, should be put before Congress. The Civil Rights Bill and integration will not stand and can never bring independence to you and your people, no matter who is president. The wisest and surest way to success is to unite behind me. I assure you that with the help of Allah, you will accomplish your goals, money, good homes, and friendships in all walks of life. An Economic Blueprint the black man in America faces a serious economic problem today and the white race's Christianity cannot solve it. of message to the black man word for word the words of the most honorable elijah muhammad are produced on cassette their slave masters children if our people in the south are permitted to vote for whom are they going to vote they will vote for none but the white man whether the black man's vote outnumbers the white man's or not the fact that you can vote does not mean that the white man will allow you to put men in Washington of your kind who would love to give you justice, nor does it mean that you will be voted in as president of the country. You can never hope to attain this. If you think because Kennedy said in 40 years a Negro man would become president of the country, he will become just that, then you misunderstood. Never will a black man be able to rule a white man in America. He was only referring to the so-called American Negro's unity with his brothers. 
This will make him strong enough to put a president in office, but not over white people. Forty years from now, there may not be a white man in the Western Hemisphere. In addition, the president is aware of the shameful, humiliating, and disgraceful acts by our people trying to be recognized and justified in the South as an equal of the white man. This is due to the poor leadership of our people. The leaders do not know that this is the time of separation and not the time of integration. The time for us to separate has come. The God of justice is bringing this about himself by making us see the enemy clearly as he really is. It is Allah who taught me that this is a race of devils. And those of you who think yourselves to be theologians know they are a race of devils according to the scriptures. Some of you may argue that you do not believe the scriptures where they teach the knowledge of this race of people. But this is written in both the Holy Quran and Bible several times. You will be punished for ignoring this truth as were the Israelites. They were in love with the Egyptians who were jealous and envious of Moses. The wisdom of Jehovah was communicated through Moses to the Israelite. The Egyptians opposed Moses and Allah became angry as the Bible teaches you. He therefore sent fiery and angry serpents to fight and kill those who were rebelling against Moses' leadership. So it is with you today. Before them, the people of Noah and the parties after them rejected prophets and every nation proposed against its messengers to destroy him and disputed by means of falsehood to render null thereby the truth. So I seized them. How terrible was then my retribution. Holy Quran 40, 05. The fifth verse is a warning for us today. It speaks of a people God has marked for destruction. Your actions are the same as disbelievers before you. They made mockery of Allah's messenger and designed plans against him. They planned to destroy him, just as the present-day disbelievers plan against my life. They desired to destroy me, the present messenger. How terrible was Allah's disapproval of their actions against his messenger. So it is today. We seek truth and justice. America knows that under her flag we have received nothing but hell, beatings, and killings without due process of the law. Day and night, not only in the past, but in the present. She wants to make some so-called Negroes believe that the religion of Islam can be thrown out the window if they turn hypocrites themselves in trying to make democracy work. This is done only to deceive the so-called American Negroes. But I say to everyone who reads this book that Islam is here among these black people of America to stay as long as their life is in their bodies. The God of Islam, Allah, is with me and will back me and others who are working hard to deliver people from such an evil and merciless race of devils. What glory and honor does a so-called Negro get under the stars and stripes? No honor, no glory, only hell. We have proof of this by their so-called courts of justice. There is no justice for you and this America knows. She would like to hurt every one of you and make you like it. It pleases her to do you evil. But not us Muslims. We will declare the truth and die for it. Thanks to Allah for removing fear from us. And I pray he puts it in them and they may fear and tremble every day until they are taken out of the way. The Monroe, Louisiana Southern Courts, with their southern judges of hatred, are thirsty to take their own law of justice, twist it up, and throw it back upon the shelf. And when they look, they see a poor, innocent, so-called Negro begging for justice, as his grandparents and their grandparents before, as far back as 400 years ago, who received nothing but the spitting of anger 
and threats of murder from the judges throughout the courts of America. Just to mention justice for a so-called Negro in the South is an insult to the judge who is supposed to be the judge of right and wrong between the state and opposing attorneys. He becomes a more vicious enemy against the poor so-called Negro than the prosecuting attorney when he sees a so-called Negro before him. The so-called Negroes do not have justice under the law, not only in the South, but anywhere in America. As I plainly stated in Washington, D.C. in 1959, in the Uline Arena, before 10,000 people, everything has failed us as far as justice is concerned. The Justice Department in Washington, the churches, the priests, and the preachers have all failed the so-called Negroes. We, the Muslims, were and are still being persecuted in Monroe, Louisiana, and throughout North America for what we teach of these two flags, Islamic and American, and especially because of the following words that you will find on a blackboard in most of our regular meetings. Which flag will survive the war of Armageddon? Armageddon is the final war of judgment and separation of the righteous from the wicked of which I am sent to teach. This is a question that is asked the mentally dead of my people in America, the so-called Negroes. This question is to show the answerer that he fully agrees that the sun, moon, and stars will survive the cross or the flag of America known as the stars and stripes. Everyone who is asked this question answers that the crescent will survive America's flag and the emblem of Christianity, which is the cross. A fool knows that the sun, moon, and stars will survive any nation. Then comes the next question. Since you believe that the crescent will survive, why not accept Islam and the flag and crescent emblem which represents the sun, moon, and the stars? We are doing work that is well known among all the learned whites and blacks, the resurrecting of the mentally dead so-called Negroes to give them divine knowledge of self, of Allah, God, and of the devil. In the past, we have been taught that God and the devil were something other than human, while the truth from Almighty God Allah, who is now among us in person, makes it clear that these two characters are human beings. I am not referring to the wise who already know these things, but to the ignorant and foolish. If you read your Bible for understanding of the reality of God and the devil, you also will agree that they are human beings and not spirits or non-existing beings. They exist. I have not the time or space to go into details. That it is a crime, or that these words, which one, meaning the American flag or the Islamic flag, will survive the war of Armageddon, or holy war, or the war to end wars, are considered a crime, or a teaching to incite insurrection or revolution to take America by force, cannot be proven to be truth by anyone who may read this or may have attended one of our meetings. If Troy X. Cade is guilty of teaching insurrection against the government, then I am guilty, because I am Troy's teacher. I would rather go to prison in place of Troy if this is the justice for the truth Allah gave me. By the help of Allah and by the blood of the original man whose father is the originator, I, Elijah Muhammad, will fight for this cause to get our people justice in America and by the help and power of Allah, the power that is in the universe, the power that is in the nation of Islam, and the power of every atom that is bound in the planet Earth and that is bound in other planets. What angers America is just the idea of her 400-year-old slave now wanting to go over to the paradise of freedom, justice, and equality under the crescent of the divine religion of Islam, where they will have sincere brotherhood and friends throughout the civilized world. Were Muslims framed to whitewash the guilty. You may know of the incident that took place on April 27, 
1962, in Los Angeles, California. Between the Los Angeles policemen and my followers, one of my followers, Ronald T.X. Stokes, was killed outright while his hands were raised and with nothing on him to do anyone harm. Every one of the brothers was unarmed when nearly 100 policemen swooped down upon them, well armed out of the darkness of the night to kill the believers of Allah and his religion, Islam, and to stop the spread of Islam. On that fateful night, one of the policemen's bullets paralyzed one brother for life, and others received serious wounds in the chest and private areas. They were all shot down for no reason other than that the devils wanted to kill the righteous, as they have done in the past to the prophets and followers, from Moses to Muhammad. And after shooting down six unarmed worshippers of God with one dead, they felt happy to boast that they had killed one of my followers. The same devil policeman who killed that follower said he shot the others and was trying to kill them all. Again, this same devil was not wounded or even scratched by any of the Muslims who were not armed and had nothing with which to retaliate against such a sudden attack by the murderers of our fathers and mothers and now the murderers of us. For 32 years, I have been trying to teach my people, the so-called American Negroes, the way of peace. And I have a record just that long in trying to live in peace with our open enemies. I have even warned my followers never to be the aggressors, as the religion of Islam teaches us that we cannot teach peace and then be the first to break peace with carnal weapons. I know who the fight belongs to. It belongs to Allah, God. Allah wants to make himself known in the Western Hemisphere that he is our God and has come to save us from the hands of our enemies and place us again in our own country and among our own people. He has said that he would do this job of delivering us and destroying those who have destroyed us. This is prophesied almost throughout the Bible. He further said that there is no way of getting along with the white race in peace. They have been found by the scientists of Islam to be disagreeable to live with in peace. The twelve scientists met to confer over the possibility of returning us, the lost founds, in the wilderness of North America to our own. This can and will be done, or the prophets could be called liars, and liars they cannot be made, for they deliver the words of Almighty Allah God, or His message, and that message is from the Lord of the worlds, Allah, who cannot lie. In Detroit, Michigan, where we were first attacked outright by the police department in April 1934, we were also unarmed. There were no deaths on the part of the believers. However, they fought back against the policemen who attacked them for no just cause whatsoever, but that they wanted our Muslim children to go to their schools. We refused to let the children take their first courses in the public schools, although the high school children in their upper teens could do so. But let us shape our children first. This was the cause of the attack at that time, and Allah was with us, and we had been peaceful there all the while. However, it was said after the battle with my followers, who had nothing to fight with but their hands, that there was hospitalization on both sides. There was no loss of lives on the side of the Muslims, and not a gun was fired by them. The lieutenant of police, the captain and commissioner of police, had warned them to not use firearms against us because we were not armed. This was true. But when the battle was over, there were more of them hospitalized than there were of us. One year later, here in Chicago, Illinois, in the police court on 11th and State Streets, 
There was a complaint made against one of my followers concerning his children going to our school, the University of Islam. As the courtroom began to fill with spectators, two court deputies showed disrespect for the Muslim women. They started pushing them around, and the Muslim brothers resented this harsh handling of the women. The police officers then began beating the men, and almost within seconds the entire courtroom was in confusion and fight. When the battle was over, the police captain lay dead from a heart attack, and others were wounded by their own gunfire. They opened fire upon my followers point blank in the courtroom because of their Muslims seeking justice in the charge made against us in our school, as in Detroit, Michigan, the previous year. In Detroit, Michigan, the police department charged us with contributing to the delinquency of minors involving one of our students, Sally Allah, who had left the public school and had come over to the University of Islam. They charged us with going around to the various school grounds, begging our poor black children to leave the white schools and come over to their own. This is when they made the charge of contributing to the delinquency of minors. The records are in Chicago to date for anyone to read. Now, one year later, 1935, here in Chicago, Illinois, they attack us on nearly the same charge. They wanted to school our children. They wanted them to go to their public schools. We know that kindergarten children and first graders once in Islam cannot be taken into Christian schools without having to suffer mockery and attack from the Christian children and from the Christian teachers who hate Islam, the God of Islam and the prophets of Islam. Therefore, we believe that to keep peace with the Christians, we must teach our children in their own schools, although they may study the same textbooks. And this will prevent clashes between the Muslims and Christians over the truth of the history of the people and the spiritual guidance and message that Allah has revealed to me. The message of Islam is bringing about one of the greatest reforms for a better life to the American so-called Negroes greater than it did ever to the Arabs 1400 years ago. I would compare this reform here with that of the Israelites under Moses 4,000 years ago to prove the teachings of Almighty Allah, God of the white race, being made the devils from the beginning, and that they are not ones who seek peace. They only use the word peace to deceive the black people, to get a chance at making mischief among them and causing bloodshed. Know that by nature the black people are for peace, and know by nature that the white people are for war, bloodshed, and are destroyers of high morals. They refuse to show any respect to their peaceful free slaves in America today. They know that we are not armed. In 32 years they have learned that my followers are not armed. They have learned that the God of peace is with us by watching great mass meetings of ours and never seeing even a dispute arise. If the white race were for peace, they would thank God for raising up in their midst a peaceful people who do not desire to make any mischief among them. Here we have the NAACP, CORE, and various other organizations before our eyes who attempt to try achieving their aims of asking for freedom, justice, and equality with the slave master's children without weapons, without anything harmful. They lie down at the feet of the vicious, weakened, human-like beast, only to be kicked and stamped upon and have dogs sicked upon them to rip their flesh apart and poison them with rabied teeth. They have no respect for people who want to be at peace with them. They have no respect for the laws of justice. They have made trouble all over the world with people who were at peace among themselves until the white shadows of the troublemakers spread out over them. We have history that they themselves have written of self, bearing witness to what I am teaching today, what must be done since we cannot get along with them in peace. You are listening to a reading of the Messenger of Allah's great book, Message to the Black Man, the words of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, read word for word. This is Message to the Black Man, page 215. 
right to peaceful assembly denied to so-called American Negroes. Dear brothers in the nation of Islam, and especially my people here in America, where live the worst enemies of Islam and of the peace of the world, it should now be clear to you after the attacks that have been made upon us and are still being made by the brutal American police forces with FBI harassment and persecution that Allah has manifested the white race of America where live the worst enemies of Islam and of the peace of the world. It should now be clear to you after the attacks that have been made upon us and are still being made by the brutal American police forces with FBI harassment and persecution that Allah has manifested the white race of America to be nothing but a race of devils. We are forbidden by Allah to carry weapons. It is well known that this is our rule. No armed person is to sit in our meetings, and because of this rule, we have been successful in enjoying a peaceful assemblage wherever we have gone. But it has again been made clear by the hostile act of the Flint, Michigan Police Department against our peaceful assemblage. The devils do not respect anyone's peace. Because of this, we shall never again permit white people to sit in our meeting, armed or unarmed. This does not include the Turkish people, Chinese, Japanese, Filipinos, those of Pakistan, Arabs, Latin Americans, Egyptians, and those of other Asiatic Muslims and non-Muslim nations. All black Americans or non-whites are welcome to our mass meetings. We will soon make a try at converting and uniting all the originals of this Western Hemisphere. All black Americans, even those who have a few drops of black blood in them, must unite under the crescent to try and save ourselves from the doom of the enemies who have ruled and killed us for the past 4,000 years and especially during the last 400 years for they have covered the earth and sea with their death-dealing rule over the aboriginals of the earth since they left the confines of Europe. And now to their latest outrage. In Flint, Michigan, there on October 27, 1963, the police department harassed us for three hours in order to enter our meeting, fully armed inside an auditorium filled with peaceful, unarmed people. This proves beyond a shadow of doubt that there is no justice nor peace for our black people here in America, whether they be Christians or Muslims. We had rented this public auditorium in Flint to teach the so-called Negro of the presence of Allah, of the judgment of the devils, and of the separation of the two peoples, black and white. Approximately 6,000 people, including 200 or 300 devils, had submitted to being searched for arms and other possessions that might be against the peaceful assembly. A black policeman had entered but had surrendered his arms. Later on, however, two white officials appeared claiming that their law compels them to go into all public meetings armed and that their weapons were not to be given up. They insisted on coming in with their arms and upon the right to overrule those who would oppose their entering, I left in the midst of my lecture. I went to the door to speak with the haters of so-called Negroes. I told them that if they wanted to come in to do as their white brothers had done, that is, give up their weapons until dismissal, and if anyone acted other than peacefully in our meeting, we would surely let them know, and they could arrest them. But this was not enough. They continued to demand interest without being disarmed. I, therefore, dismissed the meeting. I could have called their bluff, but there were too many women and children in the audience. Their record of unprovoked evil attacks against our people is a long and vicious one. The attacks began in Detroit, Michigan in 1932, 33, and 34, 
and from there to Chicago, Illinois, April 1935, and down to the attack on and murder of the Muslims in Los Angeles, California, April 27, 1962. Even under the laws of America, brutal police forces beat black people and deprive them of simple justice, including those who are in prison at the present time and those who are being sent to prison throughout the country. Untold thousands are being held in prison unjustly. Muslim prisoners are making court appeals against false charges in Monroe, Rochester, New Orleans, Attica, Denamora, and Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and against unjust court rulings. In Upper State New York and Massachusetts, the Muslims unjustly charged with attacking the police department in a peaceful assemblage have appealed. The Right of Self-Defense The so-called Negroes of Birmingham, Alabama, would have been justified by the law of justice if they had killed every dog sicked upon them by the higher tax-paid policemen for the taxpayers did not hire dogs to police their lives and property. And if the policemen had fired upon those who defended themselves against the bites of savage dogs that the police department trained expressly for the purpose of attacking so-called Negroes, they would have been justified by God and the divine law of self-defense to fight and defend themselves against such savage dog and human attack. Surely, the American so-called Negroes would have God and world sympathy on their side if they would take the right steps or actions. The present actions being taken by them are wrong, for this action consists of demanding that the slave masters accept their slaves, so-called Negroes, as their equals and as equal sharers in whatever the master has, such as social respect, which will destroy both as a people, an equal share in the government, decent housing conditions, and equal employment, not that they do not deserve it. No master of anything can accept an unequal as his equal. This law of nature is divinely respected. If they, Martin Luther King and his followers, would accept the right way, which is the belief in Allah as God and Islam as a religion, and demand a place on this earth for our 20 million or more people that they can call their own, I would demand that every one of my followers join forces in a minute. And if what they are asking for would be granted them, it would only be short-lived. Nothing permanent is in it for the so-called Negroes. It would be very foolish for a leader of 22 million want slaves to ask for temporary employment from their slave master's children, who now use the 22 million for sport. Sicking dogs on the so-called Negroes was done only for sport, to see the frightened so-called Negroes run for their lives. But as soon as the so-called Negroes turned upon the dogs and policemen with stones, Washington, D.C. ordered the army to intervene, not to help the so-called Negroes against the white southerners, but to help the white devils against the so-called Negroes if they tried to defend themselves. But as long as the dogs and policemen were biting and clubbing black so-called Negroes, it was all right. This clearly shows how much we are in dire need of unity. But the unity must be backed by a power superior to the power of our enemies. This power is in Allah and the nation of Islam, whose arms are outstretched if we would only accept them. It is ignorant to look for heaven from the devils who only seek to take you to their doom, hellfire. They, Reverend King and followers, want the rights that the Constitution offers to white citizens, but they are learning the hard way that the Constitution does not apply to the black slaves with respect to the right to vote. Certainly there is power in voting if there is justice for the so-called Negroes. But the crooked political machine of America can always keep the once slaves free slaves. Who prepares and teaches politics? Is it not the white man the enemy of so-called Negroes? Who will the poor so-called Negroes vote for? Would it not be for a white man or a black man whom the white would back? 
We could not hope for anything but more bloodshed at the polls in seeking justice from crooked politicians. We are a nation in a nation. Why not use these 22 million people's power for the eternal salvation instead of temporary enjoyment with the same wicked people who murder our people? Let us build our own political machine. Unite with me, and with the help of Allah, I will get you what you want, and I know what you want, for I am your brother. It is now time that you and I take counsel of this grief you and I must suffer. All of these burdens we must bear. It is beyond comprehension that the American government, mistress of the seas, lord of the air, conqueror of outer space, squire of the land, and prowler of the deep bottoms of the oceans, is unable to defend us from assault and murder on the streets of these concrete jungles. The lynchers live right next door, down the street, up the alley, yet they are not brought to justice. What sane man can deny that it is now time that you and I take counsel among ourselves to the end of finding justice for ourselves? When you stand up and speak a word in behalf of your own people, you are classified as a troublemaker. You are classified as a communist, as a race hater, as everything but good. If God has revealed to me the truth of this race of people and yourself, and I tell you of it, and that is the truth, then don't say that I am teaching race hatred. Just say I teach the truth. The message I bring is not for the cowards. Those of you who follow me must be ready to withstand the barbs and insults of those who come to investigate, pry, and claim that our ultimate aim is to undermine the American way of life. We have no such intentions, and our critics know it. How ironic it is that the very people who charge us with disturbing the status quo themselves go around raping, lynching, denying citizens the right to vote, and talking in the halls of Congress to call you and me everything from a beast to an immoral entity. I have no alternative than to tell you that there is not any life beyond the grave. There is no justice in the sweet by and by. Immortality is now, here. We are the blessed of God, and we must exert every means to protect ourselves. This is a reading of Message to the Black Man, written by the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, word for word, page 220 land of our own and qualifications, the unity of 22 million. The unity of 22 million so-called Negroes up from slavery is the answer to our salvation. We are suffering untold torture and murder at the hands of our enemies, the children of our slave master, because of the lack of unity. The cause of this lack of unity among us is due to the work and teaching of our enemies, the slave master's children. Our slave master's children have reared our fathers and mothers to be enemies of each other. They have destroyed our love of self and kind. They have educated us to hate and refuse all that goes for black people. This lack of love for self and kind keeps us divided, and being divided we are a nation of prey at the hands of our ever-open enemies. Whatever the amount of education we receive from our enemies, we are still the slaves of our enemies due to this lack of knowledge of self, God, and the devil, the true religion, self-pride, self-interest, and self-independence, and the desire of a country and of a government of our own under the law of justice and righteousness for every one of our poor black people throughout the earth. But let us start first here in America, where we are the victims of no freedom, justice, and equality, and we know the pains of being divided. At present, we have hundreds of clubs and organizations, thousands of teachers, hundreds of educators, scholars, scientists, technicians, doctors, lawyers, judges, congressmen, ambassadors, professors, tradesmen of all kinds, and engineers of most every kind. We have all kinds of religious believers. Teachers, preachers by the thousands, agriculturists, herdsmen and cattlemen and fishermen and hundreds of hunters of wild game. What more do we need but unity of the whole for the whole? 
What actually is preventing this unity of 22 million or more of us is the ignorance and foolish love and fear of our enemies in the professional and leadership class of this nation of 22 million black people up from slavery. These are disgraceful Uncle Toms in a world of freedom, learning an advanced science in every branch of study. How long shall we seek the white men's education to become their servants instead of becoming builders of a progressive nation of our own on some of this earth that we can call our own? Why are you so foolish to think it cannot be done? I have Allah, God, and the world of the righteous on my side to accomplish this. There is no hope for us in Christianity. It is a religion organized by the enemies, the white race of the black nation, to enslave us to the white man's rule. But our unity under the crescent, with our Allah's guidance, can get us anything we desire in the way of help and some of this earth that we can call our own. By the help of Allah, I have, and I will still prove to you that Allah, God, has given me the only solution to our problem here under this race of merciless devils. If you can prove to me that you have a better solution for the future of our nation, I will bring my followers and myself and join you. And if the solution given to me from Almighty Allah is best, come you and your followers and join with me. How can we unite? So you say that we cannot unite and produce our own necessities? We are 22 million or more people depending on the white American citizens to produce food, clothes, shelter, transportation, employment, and our educational training. And if they, white Americans, do not share equally with us, we charge them with discriminating. Some of us will go to the extreme of disgracing ourselves in trying to force the white American citizens to give equal respect. The love of self and self-respect along with the will to do something for self, if given a chance, will get you the respect of all civilized nations. It is a shame and disgrace to the intelligence of any people to lie at the feet and doorsteps of another nation, asking, praying to be cared for. Love and unity of self and kind is the key to our salvation. If you say we cannot unite, you are wrong. We can unite. Before your very eyes, you see the believers in Allah, God, and His religion. Islam, uniting, and this divine power from Allah working among us, uniting us into a nation of brotherly love, disapproves the lie of that old saying that Negroes cannot unite. I agree with you who are in the Christian churches, lovers and followers of white Christians, that you cannot enjoy love and unity among yourselves. The basic aim and purposes of the religion Christianity was to deceive other races, namely the black, brown, yellow, and red, to make an easy prey for the white race. But today, you and I both see the powerless forces of Christianity, unable to bring about peace among those who profess it. Since Christian Europe and America cannot bring peace to their troubled world, with all their satellite nations as helpers, what kind of peace can they make for us? Their religion divides one against the other. This I am sure we all can agree upon. We must know self to gain self-respect. This will remove that old slave idea that the so-called Negroes cannot unite and build an independent nation on some of this good earth that we can call our own. Stop looking for others to help you in that in which you can help yourself. The white man has made the black man lazy that he may rule and enslave him by producing and selling to him that which he can produce himself. But the white man knows that he has destroyed the black man's unity. And as long as the black man thinks he cannot love and unite with black 
the white man knows that he has a permanent slave. Come, and let us unite under the crescent and do something for ourselves in the way of supporting our own needs. Go after some of this earth for our nation of 22 million here in North America. If it cannot be had here, there is plenty of earth elsewhere. We want nothing short of a home on this earth that we can call our own, not to be servants and slaves for other free nations. Let us capture the market of our people by producing their needs. We cannot produce our needs on the soil of another, of land and a nation. What we must understand today is the importance of acquiring land of our own. We are no longer a mere handful of people. We are a little better than 22 million in population and still increasing. We cannot forever continue to depend upon America to give us a job, send us to school, build our houses, and sell us her food and give nothing in return. America was not established and chartered with constitutional guarantees for the black man but for the white man. America was not founded to guarantee the freedom and equality of the black man and woman, and indeed, she is not seeking to grant these privileges to our people today. In what other country on this earth will you find 22 million people within the framework of another people's government seeking to become qualified citizens, joyously singing the song of integration? Our people are the fools of the nations. Integration means self-destruction, and the means of this end is exactly that death is nothing less. The black people throughout the earth are seeking independence for their own, not integration into white society. What do we look like trying to integrate with our 400-year-old enemies? The average so-called Negro wants to change his own flesh color and blood for a strange blood and flesh. In order to build a nation, you must first have some land. From our first generation of slaves to the present generation of our people, we have been unable to unite and acquire some land of our own due to the mental poisoning of our former slave masters who destroyed in us the desire to think and do for self and kind. Do you as educated and professional men and women desire to be recognized forever as the mental slaves, beggars of white America? Today, the international conception of honor, pride, and dignity is not concerned with individuals within a country, but is rather concerned with your work and value as a part of an established nation. In order to be recognized today, you must represent your nation. We must understand the importance of land to our nation. The first and most important reason that the individual countries of Europe, Africa, and Asia are recognized as nations is because they occupy a specific area of the earth. Second, they are recognized because of the effectiveness of their internal unity and policies and then by their enactment of international policies and agreements with other established nations. The black man has been actually worthless when it comes to exercising the rights as human beings in an ever advancing civilization. So remember, we cannot demand recognition until we have some land that we can call our own. You might argue that this is impossible, but I say to you with almighty Allah God on my side, this is not only possible, but is in the working for our people and will manifest itself soon. A house of our own. We cannot be successful in the house. Justice and equality can be solved in the white man's cooked and corrupt policies. But these so-called leaders who think this political strategy will solve our problem are as far wrong as the distance from the east to the west. I have said many times that the solution to our problem is divine.
There are so many who would, just for self-praise or exaltation, like to lead you astray under the false claim that they can solve the problem by ways other than divine. You should never listen to these leaders because they will lead you into the fisherman's net. Such leaders show no respect for Allah and His power to solve our problem of freeing us from our enemies and raising us into a state of independence like other independent nations. Independence to you is strange. You have given up the hope of ever being independent, but this is just what Allah God wants to do for you. Don't you think it is time after 400 years as servants to strangers? It is hopeless to think that these strangers will ever be other than what they now are to you. Please do not think that they can be conquered by brickbats, shotguns, a few arms or homemade bombs. It takes the forces of nature and the confusion of minds and thoughts which are controlled by the power of Allah. Be wise and submit to Allah who has the power to defend you and destroy your enemies who are too powerful for you. Much is being done in attempting to stop Elijah Muhammad's deliverance of Allah's message of life and salvation to his people here in America who have been used as merchandise cattle and animals. The hypocrites and devils are now united against me and my followers and wish to make a concerted attack on us with many false charges as well as planning actual death for us. But Allah too has planned. I say to my followers, fear not. If you are with me, Allah is with you. And the more they attack us, the more Allah is attacking and will attack them. The truth of Allah will be universally and permanently established. I have Allah on my side, while the hypocrites have the devils, and they cannot defend the followers on their side who are against Allah. I knew that the enemies and hypocrites were going to do this long ago, because Allah had told me of them and the evil, deceitful plans they would try to carry out. He will bring them to naught before your very eyes. As you see, their efforts in trying to oppose me are being counteracted by Allah with the conversion of more people everywhere. The hypocrites will never find true friends and will never enjoy the light and guidance of Allah. They are confused and cannot claim Allah because they have not believed in Him by forsaking His Messenger. May He, Allah, give them the chastisement that He promised them in his holy Quran and give those who believe in him and his truth the joy of fearlessness lack of grief and peace of mind and contentment do we have the qualified men and women for self-government the answer to the above question is yes we do not have to be equal in knowledge with every nation to be successful in operating our own government were those whites who first came to this country seeking self-government equal with England's parliamentary lords? There are probably many independent people who do not have among them many who have the know-how of the American educated class of so-called Negroes. We have enough technicians such as mathematicians, construction engineers, civil engineers, mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, physicists, chemists, educators, agriculturists, navigators, and aeronauts among the 22 million or more of us, you will find scholars or scientists whom we can use in every branch of government. Then there are our own independent people outside of this country who would be glad to help us get going in a country or state for ourselves. We do not expect to build, nor do we desire to build, a government pattern after the order of the white race. Naturally, we would need help for the next 20 or 25 years. After that, we would be self-supporting. The spirit of doing for self is now fast coming into our people. They only need a new education of self and others. World's greatest people. Unity under the crescent of Islam 
is all that is necessary for you and me to become the world's greatest people. The lying and slavery teachings of the white man's Christianity that has crucified our people all over the earth must be given up. We must accept the true religion, Islam, of Jesus and the prophets before and after him before we can be successful in doing anything. Separate and be saved. The unwillingness of the slaves to leave their masters is due to their great love for the slave masters. If America is unwilling to grant her 22 million ex-slaves freedom to go for self today, it is the same unwillingness of white America's forefathers in dealing with our parents less than 100 years ago. During the time of the Emancipation Proclamation, we were scattered to the winds without any knowledge or ability to undertake the responsibilities of a half-freedom. Our fathers, lacking the skills and the training needed to provide for themselves, were forced to remain with the masters in order to receive even the barest necessities of life. Our former slave masters, knowing of our dependence upon them, maliciously and hatefully adopted attitudes and social and educational systems that have deprived us of the opportunity to become free and independent right up to the present day. But we, the black slaves of this soil of bondage, were not deprived of the freedom to fight in America's wars, but we are deprived of the right to fight for our own freedom. The opposition met by our four parents who fought for their freedom is a chilled memory that history will not forget. The black people are given the freedom to give their lives for the American cause of tyranny, but are not free to fight for their own freedom and independence. As long as my people are the blind lovers of their enemies, they will seek to forever return to the bosom of their masters in no better status or position than that of a slave. Our four parents' desire was to see us free indeed, and not only are some of our people willing to betray those of our blood and kindred who died before us, but they are now willing to betray the fruitation of freedom of our generations to come. Allah will help us to get this freedom, justice, and equality, and some of this earth that we can call our own. I say to the American white citizen who are in a position to oppose us to hasten the separation of the two or suffer the consequences, as did the Egyptians opposing Jehovah and his servant Moses. We must have some of this earth that we can call our own. The reading of Message to the Black Man, written by the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, page 227. We and our fathers have been robbed of all that we originally possessed, and now we are left without anything to use for self like wealth and modern instruments to start a civilization as you have, though we helped you to get what you have. We now must have justice and some of this earth and its wealth that we can call our own. You're listening to Message to the Black Man, a reading of this gigantic beautiful message for the black man by the most honorable Elijah Muhammad messenger of Allah we're reading page 228 must have some earth and soon let the foolish educators and teachers think not that we may have a future in white America's promises for they themselves do not have a future unless they are willing to divide this country between our people the so-called Negroes and the Indians whom they robbed nearly 500 years ago. However, we must have some of this earth that we can call our own and soon. We, also the Indians, deserve justice in this matter. We can no longer think in the slavery time terms as we used to think. The preachers need and must be taught the true religion of God and stop enslaving our people into that lying and slavery teaching of the devil's white race. Believe it or not, we have been serving and worshiping the real devils. Stop preaching that old lie that God loves all human beings. He most certainly does not love the devils, the white race. He set a day for their doom, the day they were grafted and given 6,000 years to rule us, rule of lying and murdering us day and night, and deceiving nearly the entire nation of black, brown, yellow, and red people. I possess a letter that is supposed to be authentic, 
on how the devils boast that they have murdered, killed 100 million black Africans since they have contacted them with their lying Christianity. Do we not love our black brother's blood regardless of where spilled? In 1898, a devil by the name of Lacrex, representing Belgium's big business, admitted he had murdered 160 million so-called Negro men, women, and children. He also admitted he had tortured some and crucified women and children. The Congo, in 1880, Belgium estimated the population of 30 million. By 1911, the population was reduced 8.5 million. In 1894, an English traveler, E.J. Glaive, reported, 21 heads of black men were brought to Stanley Falls and used as decoration around a flower bed in one of the homes of a high-ranking army officers. Missionaries reported that white Christians forced the so-called Negroes into slavery producing rubber, and if the rubber was bad quality, the poor black slaves were made to eat it, and you are fools enough to preach their deadly poison religion Christianity to the suffering of self and kind? Are you in love? with your open enemies and murderers of all black people, God and his prophets? Then stick around and see where you will end up. A nation of our own, the poor slave. After his masters let him go free, his first problem to solve was securing a home of his own for the first time. He must now do for self. Master is no longer responsible for him, he must solve his own problems. He must now realize that he must work hard to be equal of other nations. He must also remember that justice and righteousness is his defense and wickedness his enemy and the downfall of his government and his people. He must learn to make friends and to protect himself against enemies. He must dig into the earth for her rich treasures. He must now seek the friendship of other nations to do business with them and trade product for product. But if the slave is lazy, he will always be the slave for another. No nation respects a beggar. We, the members of the original black nation of the earth who were once lost from our own kind, are supposed to be free. It absolutely does not make sense for us to be seeking integration with our slave master's children instead of seeking unity among our own kind. There is not any earth offered to us in integrating. How can we and our children build an independent nation on this earth without some of it that we can call our own? Do not we look ignorant, begging white America to accept us as equal members of their society without having one square foot of earth that we can call our own? We are like hunter dogs whom the hunter is tired of and wishes that they would go and hunt food for themselves. But the poor foolish dog is there whenever his master sits down to eat, standing in the door begging with his tongue hanging out and wagging his tail, while at the same time, had he gone into the woods looking for a meal, he would not have had to suffer the hatred, kicks, and curses of his master. Without some of this earth for a home that we can call our own, rest assured, we will forever be 22 million begging slaves at the door of some nation. We, the black people of America, should be ashamed of ourselves to go sit in the white businesses to force them to serve us. Let us unite and serve ourselves. If the spiritual leaders could understand the Bible's prophecy, they would see how foolish they are in doing the things they are now doing. We should seek a permanent home for our nation, not by begging others for what is theirs, and stop acting foolish and unite. Do for self before you will have it to do. The white race's days are drawing to a close. Their rule over the darkened nations must end, according to Allah God and his prophets. This wicked world must give way for a world of righteousness. A nation within a nation. From a few comes a great nation. 
the Lord God of Islam taught me that in 1555 a devil by the name of John Hawkins or Hopkins of England brought the first of our parents here for slave purposes. We were not to be citizens, not to be represented as human, or to be given equal justice under the American laws. In 300 years of slavery, we were lashed, beaten, and killed, given no education, and reared and cared for like the slave master's stock, horses, cows, and other domestic animals. Our children were separated to different plantation owners. For the last approximately 100 years of so-called freedom, the so-called Negroes have been subjected to the worst inhuman treatment of any people who have ever lived on the earth. They, the devils, have lynched and burned the so-called Negroes during the past century as sport for their wives and children to enjoy. Edwin R. Embry states in his book, Brown Americans, page 169, that the burning of Henry Laurie in Arkansas proceeded by inches. Leaves soaked in gasoline were heaped about in small bundles so that torture would be dragged out. Ralph Roddy, a reporter, described the entire orgy in the Memphis press of January 27, 1921. He was able to cover the story because plans for the lynching had been made well in advance. The newspapers were notified to be ready to issue extras. When Henry Smith was burned at the stake in Texas, excursion trains were run for the event. Many women and children were in the throng that gloated over the suffering of the victim. This is something that teachers and leaders of the so-called Negro should teach their children, the evil and murder of their people by these blue-eyed white devils. Instead, because of their fear of the white, blue-eyed devils, the so-called Negro parents teach their children just the opposite. Their doctrine is, love your enemies and do not hate those who mistreat you. That is, if it is a white person, but if he is a Negro, kill or beat the hell out of him. The so-called Negro leaders know the white devils do not care about a Negro killing another Negro. How can we keep our younger people of the present day from loving their open enemies, the devils? The Lord God of righteousness dislikes any one of us who loves these white, blue-eyed devils. He threatens to send every one of us to hell with the devils who show love for them, love to be called by the devils' names or worship their images. Read your Bible and Holy Quran. Edwin Embry, also on the same page, mentions what Walter White, deceased secretary of the NAACP, said he heard and saw in Florida. In his book, Rope and Faggot, White recounts the gruesome tale of lynching in this country. While investigating an atrocious riot in Florida, White was met, he says, by three clean, healthy children, White, headed for school. None were over nine years of age. They gleefully described the event and the fun we had burning the niggers. Do thank Allah for revealing this evil, deceitful, open enemy, the devil. The devil has deceived most of the world of black people. They have nearly nine-tenths of the black people headed to their doom with them. Curse be to the black man or woman who loves this open enemy, the devil, and hates his own black skin and kind. May the chastisement of Allah choke you until you submit that there is no God but Allah and that Muhammad in the wilderness of North America is his messenger. After all of the evil we have suffered at the very hands of these devils, we have become a nation in a nation. We must now be separated from them and given a place on this earth that we can call our own. They, the white race, cannot treat you and me with justice and equality. They cannot do so among themselves, even though they are against us. This does not mean that they have love and peace for each other. No, they war against each other all the time. They are devils. No heart of love and mercy are in them, as you may think. Nature did not give them such a heart. 
The Bible warns us against the love and worship of these devils. Psalms 106.3.7 says, Yea, they sacrifice their sons and their daughters unto devils. In another place it states, And I would not that you should have fellowship with devils. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of the devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and the table of the devils. 1 Corinthians 10.21 They should not worship up devils. Revelation 9.20 The so-called Negroes, because of their fear and ignorance of this real open enemy devil, will fall victim to them if we do not constantly warn them of the consequences. I am willing to die for the so-called Negro that they may see and understand the truth of self, God, and this race of devils. We have served them well through ignorance and blindness because of being without a teacher, Allah. God has given you one. I, Elijah Muhammad, am from God himself. Why not believe and follow me? Are you afraid of being persecuted for the sake of truth to this 22 million blind, deaf, and dumb, lost-found nation of Islam? In that case, your life is already doomed. For Freedom, Justice, Equality With the fight going on in the South between the slaves and their masters, the slaves and mine have become home-born slaves, as it is written, Jeremiah 2.14. They love their master and desire to be their master's kin in the line of true brotherhood. This is the truth which cannot be hidden in these modern times. The intelligent people and the college university graduates are poisoned 100% more in mind and into the love of the enemy than the uneducated. It is no wonder that the scriptures say the poor gladly receive the truth after being offered heaven at once from Almighty Allah, God Himself. According to black men's actions and rejection of Allah and the true religion Islam, which means entire submission to the will of Allah, they will take all kinds of humiliation. They are beaten and killed by the white man, the real citizen and owner of the land, while trying to force him to admit them, the once slaves, as equals to the white race. I have taught for years that you cannot demand the white man accept you as his equal or as his brother because he is intelligent enough to know that you are not his equal and that you are not his brother. Even if you go back to Adam, he is not the black man's father. We are not all compatible. Adam is the father of the white man. This is known. The suffering of my people in trying to force themselves on the white man in the South and elsewhere as their brothers and sisters is to be pitified. I, for one, have true love for them and I pity them. But I cannot help them when they deliberately walk away from God. By their deeds and acts they indicate they would rather help the enemy, the murderer and those who hate them, then help God Almighty, whose proper name is Allah, and who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, and to whom praises are due forever. The best and most intelligent way is to give Caesar what is Caesar's, and let us go for ourselves on some of this earth that we can call our own, just as did the white people. When Europe was overpopulated, they found expansion in the Western Hemisphere. If we want freedom, justice, and equality, we must look for it among ourselves and our kind, not among the people who have destroyed and robbed us of even the knowledge of ourselves, themselves, our God, and our religion. We have a world of Muslims under Allah and His religion, Islam. The white people do not teach you this because it points the way to your freedom and equality. It is a shame that our people are beaten and killed because of their ignorance in wanting to be white people, while there are billions of people on the face of this earth who look like them, but only 400 million white people on our planet Earth. Our population runs into billions, and the earth belongs to us. We are the original owners of the earth and will take it and rule it again. This is the time. Message to the Black Men, page 234. Our day is near at hand. Jesus did not teach in his time what today we call Christianity. He knew nothing about Christianity in those days. 
He had never heard of such. Jesus taught in his times the same religion that Moses taught, Islam. We must be separated, whether we like it or not. I say we must be separated. I do not know why they want to hold on to us unless Allah is forcing them to do it so that he can get a better chance to punish them as he has wanted to do, as he did Pharaoh. I do not know why the white people want to deceive you, trick you, try to court you and make sweethearts of you and marry you in order to get you to stay with them. I would be telling you to go, and when they see what is after them, they will say go. They won't tell you to stay. I want to tell you who think that you are inferior, who think that you are nothing, who think that the white race is superior and the wisest people there ever were, that you are mistaken. I want to satisfy your minds, my friends, my brothers, my sisters, that you fear not that the white world will destroy us. They cannot do it. We have a Savior with us. We have a Savior that is born. I do not think any white ruler is silly enough to destroy the Muslims. I do not think that the white government of America would try to force us to our knees by not giving us employment. If they do so, come to me. We have a Savior today. He is with me. He is able to feed you. He is able to clothe you. He is able to shelter you. I say to you who think that I am begging for some of these states, as I read in the papers, I am not begging for states. It is immaterial to me. If the white government of America does not want to give us anything, just let us go. We will make a way. Our God will make a way for us. I am not going to start a war with them to take land because all of it belongs to us. I say to the government that if they cannot agree on giving us justice and agree on giving us a chance to make a living for ourselves as they are for themselves with freedom, justice, and equality as they have, then let us go. Let us go back to our native land and people. Every Muslim can go. We, the Muslims, are the true owners of the heavens and the earth. I give the white people credit. They do the best they can in some instances, but at the same time, I cannot say that they are angels. They have jailed us and bound us up among them. They should take care of us, give us a chance. If not, they should let us go. Do not tell me that we are equal. We are not equal. We cannot be equal. How can we be equal when they own everything and we own nothing? We have enough educated black men and women in this government to start a government big enough to take care of the world. War is due. War is inevitable. There can be no showdown here in America until your problem is solved. He, Allah, has made me a door. If you get out, you will come by me. And if you reject me, you will not go. I have been given the keys to heaven. This white government has ruled us and given us plenty of hell. But the time has come that you shall taste a little of your own hell. The only way that America could have an extension of time. I guess you think I am acting like a judge, but I heard what the judge said. If America attacks any nation, she will herself be shot to pieces. For centuries she has boasted that she has made other nations bow at her feet. Now God wants to show the others that he will make you bow. It would be wise for you if you want to get an extension of time to treat us right. And if you want to hasten your time, shoot us. Shoot Elijah. Kill us all. Kill all of my followers. And Elijah will go down laughing and knowing that this is the end of you. All of my followers have been questioned by the FBI. Just what are you trying to do? You want to find out just how weak or how strong we are. We want the FBI to know what we are teaching. We are not teaching what we do not want you to know. FBI, we want the government to know we have no secrets. The thing that you should do is to keep it a secret yourself when you can. Do you think that I am happy knowing that you are behind me trying to keep my followers from following me? I am not happy about you trying to take my followers, carrying them with you because I know where you're going. Now the white people want to marry Negroes. Negroes who have no knowledge of themselves want to marry white folks. It is like a frog wanting to marry a rattlesnake because the rattlesnake is so full of frogs he cannot swallow another one. The whole world is angry. 
We must have a showdown. We have to have it. We want to live in peace. Every day of our lives, we are at your mercy. An army of policemen throughout the country with clubs in their hands set out to beat the nigger and to shoot the nigger if they feel like it. Nothing is hindering him. He is not going to go to prison for doing it. All he has to do is to tell the judge that he shot that old nigger. And the judge will wink his eye at him and say, Wish I had a chance to shoot him myself. This is the kind of people we are living with, with murderers, not friends, but murderers. Look at the southern senators saying that they will sit down and stay there night and day before they will ever agree to give the Negro civil rights. There are many of my poor black ignorant brothers and even preachers preaching the ignorant and lying stuff that you should love your enemy. What fool can love his enemy? Martin Luther calls himself a preacher and has written a book to try to fool you to make you love the devil himself. How can Martin Luther, being the minister of God, he claims, teach his people to love their enemy when God himself said he had set a day to deal with his enemies and he said himself, according to the Bible that Martin Luther reads, that there were two brothers. I loved one and hated the other. I want to know from you why so much about hate teachings. It is hate teachings, you say. It is race teachings. I want to know if you were born in America as I was. All your life you have been hated by white people and you are hated by them today. Here comes the truth of the white man making you know that he cannot love, that he is the devil himself. Now you say, no, no, he is not the devil. God said he was. They say we teach that he is the blue-eyed devil. I did not make him. They say that I am teaching you all to hate the devil. But when did they ever love our people? I will most certainly not teach you to love the devil. They are doing everything they possibly can. And I do not care if the entire white race hears me say this. They are doing everything they possibly can to deceive the poor old Negro. We are happy, we the Muslims. We know we have a savior. In 1877, a savior was born to go after that particular people that was lost and swallowed up by Israel, seeking something that did not belong to Israel, not seeking any but his own particular people. A savior is born, not to save the Jews, but to save the poor Negro. I am here to teach the way back to the truth, back to the author of truth. A savior has come to save you from sin, not because you are by nature a sinner, but because you have followed a sinner. You have been taught by a sinner. I want to say to you again that this truth has come to you to separate you from the devil. I am taught by Almighty God, Allah, that he is going to destroy this world. You should try to get out of it, not integrate into it. The Flag of USA and Islam in the name of Allah, who came in the person of Master W.F. Muhammad, to whom praises are due forever, the finder and life giver to us, the so-called Negroes who have been lost from our own nation, God and religion for the past 400 years. The teachings on the significance of the American flag and the Islamic flag were given to me by Master W.F. Muhammad, Allah, God, in person. The meanings are essential in teaching a people who have become spiritually or mentally dead. These two flags represent the emblems of the two great religious forces and religion and government can be read in the science of this flag. Of course, the great cross is the sign or emblem of the Christian religion. The flag of this country is designed for and according to the wishes of those who are called Christians. There is a much broader science or significance when it comes to the flag of Islam. Here, the flag of Islam is the recognized emblem of both the government and the religion, while the American flag, according to their teaching, stands more for the people and their conquering power or bravery than for religion. On the other hand, the science of the Islamic flag does not come under the spirit of conquering and bravery. The nature of its science is the greatness of the unlimited wisdom of its designer, the great source of goodness for all that is under and in the flag of Islam, 
the freedom, the justice, the equality that is freely exercised by both believer and non-believer under the flag of Islam, which is revealed for the sole purpose of teaching the great unlimited source of mercy and love that the designer has for his creatures. They all enjoy equally the natural benefits of the sun, moon, and stars, the Islamic flag, which are essential for our existence regardless of religious beliefs. To lead the American so-called Negroes back into their own religion of Islam, they must know how strong and powerful the religion of Islam is while they are now under the emblem, cross, and flag of religion of the citizens and owners, white, of the United States of America. The religion, Christianity, and the true history and science of their flag must be taught to the American so-called Negroes before they can see their way in returning to their own God and religion to become an independent people. I do not see why the southern white citizens of America and Louisiana are trying to make it a crime to teach the meaning of these two flags when they know how necessary it is. Any person who is a citizen of any country should have a thorough knowledge of the flag which he claims to be his own and that he is willing to give his life to maintain. I have heard it said that we teach that under the flag of America we receive suffering, slavery, and finally death. Why this is as true as the existence of the American flag on our part, according to their own history written concerning our welfare under their flag. Today, the government is trying to force the recognition of the so-called Negroes equally with the true white citizens of America. This the South objects to, which makes it again abundantly true that the poor, once slaves, have actually suffered slavery and death under the stars and stripes of America and numerous other cruelties and deaths which hardly can be put into writing. Just why does the South want to make it a crime for her so-called freed slaves to say they have suffered slavery and death under the American flag? Why does the South want to twist it and claim that it is to excite war and the taking of America by force when the so-called freed slaves are yet shackled and tied to their power which makes it impossible for them to take America by force. This is absolutely a willful and knowingly false charge made for the purpose of inciting more hatred and more abuses and more deaths for the once slaves of America. The abundantly clear signs of freedom, justice, and equality that await the converts to the religion of Islam must also have something to do with the anger and false charges and the ignoring of their own law of justice in the South when it comes to the so-called Negroes. The teaching of the true history of the so-called Negroes under the American flag is a crime in the state of Louisiana and is not a crime in Michigan, Illinois, New York, and other states of the Union. The federal government should be the sole judge and the only independent and rightful party to say whether it is a crime or not. If the federal government allows Louisiana to send so-called Negroes who believe in Islam to prison for three, five, and more years for teaching the truth of his history under the flag of America and of the very scientific meanings of the design of it, then the federal government should make it clear whether or not it ignores its own duty of protecting what is known to be the federal law of the land. Just because it is a so-called Negro involved, the decision is left to the southern courts as to whether it is their rightful part and duty to exercise this law. This means there is no federal law that can be relied upon for protection in America if certain white citizens do not like it. Could the science of the colors of the flag be the secret that has caused the rise of anger of the Louisiana white citizens against the Muslims? The Islamic flag consists of an all-red color with a crescent of white placed in it. The red represents the sun, which is truthfully a red ball of fire that lights up and warns the planetary worlds in her circle. This is the physical meaning, that we receive freedom of light and warm from this mighty red ball of fire, whether Muslim, Christian, Buddhist, or any disbeliever, even atheist. The American flag has red in it. The American flag has stars in it, but no moon. It is not necessary for the science of a moon in her flag because it would not correspond with the nature and government of the people who own the American flag. But in our flag, 
that of the nation of Islam, the moon's physical work is that of equalizing, and the star on the Islamic flag is put there for the purpose of showing her physical help in guidance for man as well as to beautify the universe. According to science, the stars are without number. Allah, God said, they put one star in our flag which serves to represent all of the stars. The now 50 stars in the American flag physically represent the 50 states which make up what they call a United States. The spiritual side, however, is never mentioned in the teaching of the American flag. The True Solution Will civil rights solve the so-called Negroes problem? By no means will it, or anything else except Allah solve our problem. Civil rights, according to the English dictionary, means the equal rights of a human being on a level with any other human being. These rights are limited here in America. First and foremost, the so-called Negro needs human rights, which will warrant his recognition as a human being by his slave masters. This also gives him universal rights, the same equal rights as any other human being. Will the so-called Negro enjoy the equal rights that the American white citizens enjoy? Or will he continue to wait patiently for civil rights to come within 100 years from now? I am convinced that neither a white nor a Negro government will be here 100 years from now to witness what will take place. There is nothing good coming from the white man for the so-called Negro's future. I have repeatedly warned you that there is no justice for you in the white man. This civil rights bill was made up by white people and passed by white people. Even at this late date, there is no indication that the white man will or even desires to treat the so-called Negroes equally. It is not his nature to treat you or even his kind right. It cannot be done. Reverend Martin Luther King, Jr., the 1964 Nobel Peace Prize winner, would have honored himself and his people if he had refused the medal. The money could have been accepted since his people need it. Even if he did not need it himself, there are poor among his followers who really need financial help. He won neither prize nor justice for his people. Reverend Martin Luther King, Jr. wants brotherhood with white America for himself and his followers. As reported here, the Nobel Peace Prize was conferred on him in Norway. Reverend King sharply warned in St. Paul's Cathedral that a doctrine of black supremacy was as great a danger as one of white supremacy. He followed up with the words, unless men and nations live together, they will perish together. Then came the statement, according to the paper, too many of our white brothers are only concerned with their economical problems, their social status their political powers, and their so-called way of life. Of his own people, he said, we must not seek to rise from a position of disadvantage to one of advantage, substituting injustice of one type for that of another. I have never heard of any such talk coming from a leader's mouth in all of my life. If a man is not going to rise from a position of disadvantage, why is he preaching for the passage of the Civil Rights Bill for his people? No wonder he had the privilege of going into a cathedral where no so-called Negro had ever stood in the pulpit. He is ignorant, preaching for brotherhood of white people and destruction of his own people, because brotherhood with the white people means the destruction of the black people. According to the Bible, he preaches from it, you should not make friends or have friendship with the wicked if you are the righteous, and you should not worship the devils. Most certainly, the white man is the devil. His own Bible teaches him that. He said, God is not interested in the freedom of white, black, or yellow men, but in the freedom of the whole human race. Here again, the reverend shows that he has not studied the scripture. has been under the rule of Satan, the devil, for 6,000 years, and now 
separation must come between God's people and the devil so that the righteous can survive. This kind of talk coming from a theological college graduate is almost unbelievable. How many American so-called Negroes would like to follow a man who speaks like one who cares nothing about them? Reverend King has made it clear that he never wants the black man to rule because he knows it will be just as dangerous as white supremacy. This shows that all black people should disregard anything that a man like that says. He disagreed that his people should ever rise from the level of a subject people of slavery. I would like to ask the Reverend under whom he would like to live, since he condemns the ability of both for the supreme character of ruling the nations of the earth as the white man has done and enjoyed for the last 4,000 years. He wants to be a brother to the white man and wants the black man to be like the white man. This is continued enslavement. I am just wondering how many followers he has after his last statements. I heard the Reverend King say on television that he wanted white people to be his brothers and not his brothers-in-law. He loves our enemies. Any black person who believes in himself should not go near or even listen to this type of teaching. It is really awful to hear a man say such things when he has been beaten and thrown into jail seeking the right to exercise the rights of a member of his own black nation. So in view of such statements, Reverend King is of no good among black people. What are you going to do? Are you going to follow such teachings or will you turn around and join your own kind? I cannot see nor can I understand why the so-called American Negro is so blind, deaf, and dumb. We have the right to live and do for ourselves and our children. We do not want any more promises and we cannot get along in peace with a universally known enemy of black men. Since Allah has revealed the very nature of the Caucasian race that they are devils, there is no way of changing them to be anything other than that which they are. A rule we must live by. Almighty God Allah, who appeared in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, has given us the knowledge of self and others, and we are now spreading it. Allah chose me to teach you this particular subject. Accept your own and be yourself. This was his first and foremost teaching for us. This is the teaching, and these are the words of Almighty God Allah to us in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, to whom praises are due forever and ever. Is it true that you have rejected your own? Is it true that you do not want your own and reject the truth that the Almighty God of truth has brought to you? Is it true that you would rather be other than yourself? Let us examine our thoughts to see what we are actually thinking about and just what we would like to be. Let us present ourselves to the world as we really are. I do not think that God could have taken a better subject to teach us than the one he has, accept your own and be yourself. The so-called Negroes of which I am a member are the lost and found members of the tribe of Shabazz from that great aboriginal people of the earth, the black nation. Remember this, we are the aboriginals of the earth and are called the black people and we are the black nation. Living under the rule of other than our own kind and self for the past 6,000 years has brought much misunderstanding, much not knowing, and many theories that have been used in many places, and the people have taken theories that have been used in many places. A theory is not true until it has been proved to be true. We today, 6,000 years from the beginning of this world, are disputing with one another on who is who and what is what. But the wisest step taken to put an end to this disputing was taken by God himself in these same words, accept your own and be yourself. For the past 6,000 years, we have not been ourselves. This is true. For the past 400 years, we, the lost and found members of our kind here in the Western Hemisphere, especially in the part called the United States of America, have been actually made more ignorant to the knowledge of ourselves than any other people on the earth.
Though our black brothers in Africa and Asia too have to learn the knowledge of self, they are a little step ahead of us because they have not been deprived of their way of life or their desire to live their own lives, that is, for the past few centuries. The coming of the white European race into their countries interfered with their own, and to this day this has caused great confusion among the African original people, so much so until today they too are a long way from having the true knowledge of self. We can take and examine the knowledge of all the people as far as races are concerned, such as the white, brown, yellow, and red races, and find that they too are really off the knowledge of their real selves, according to the teachings and truth of Almighty God Allah, who has revealed it to me. Let us take a look at some of what Allah has revealed to me on this subject. Spiritually, he says, that your own self, referring to you, is a righteous Muslim. Physically, he says, that we are the first and the last, and that there were no people before us. We are not from a father of another people. We are the father of all human beings, regardless of color or language. This covers the brown, yellow, red, and white. Originally, all of these races, and they are truthfully named by the word races, were begun by the black man. They all came from him, and there are some white scientists who know this and will agree, and there are probably scientists of the darker races who will also agree. But there are only a few who actually know these truths, and these few have not felt that they should reveal it to the masses because they feel that this is something they should hold for their own interest. Truths to set you free. What should you know? What should you do? And what is your place in this change of worlds, governments, and people? You have the best offer, better than that of any other human beings who have ever lived. You have been taught for the past 34 years from the mouth of Almighty God Allah through His Messenger that you are the first and the last and that you have been loose in what He Allah calls a wilderness, a place of sin and evil doings opposed to a civilization of righteousness and the doings of good. This is a reading of a wonderful publication by the Messenger of Allah, the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. This is page 244 of Message to the Black Man. For the past 400 years you have been robbed completely of the knowledge of self and kind and of Almighty God, the Creator and Maker of the heavens and the earth. We are the direct descendants of God, while those who have mistreated us, and still do, are the direct offspring of a rebellious scientist of God. A scientist who grafted and made the white man an enemy to us. From the rebellious spirit of their Creator, they have deceived, murdered, and ruled the righteous who are of the original black nation of the earth. This has been made very clear. Being born and nursed by the enemy of righteousness, you have fallen in love with them. The history of the life of your fathers reveals an evil, murderous condition that they had to undergo. The treatment you are receiving now and have received should bear enough witness to the truth. Your love for this unalike people and their wealth, which they have robbed you of, and the majority of your people, now makes you want to be one of them and desire to intermarry with such people, while history has recorded them as burning your actual living flesh at the stake out of the law of justice. We live in a government that has always yielded and sided with the murderers and those who slay us and our people at home and abroad, anywhere the black man may be on the earth. You should realize that your black brother is your black brother wherever he is on the face of the earth. Look at your brother in Africa who has been dominated by the Europeans and other white races of the earth. He is fighting for a chance to shake off the shackles of the open enemies, while you here in America profess to be their friends. Are you not ashamed of yourselves seeking love and intermarriage with them? Your brother is trying to regain the power of his own country. You are playing the part of a hypocrite to yourself and your kind wherever they live by appealing to the murderers to accept you as one of them, as their sons-in-law. What a fool you are making of yourself without the knowledge of self 
and the time in which you are living. This is the time that justice has come to you to settle the injustice done to you by your enemies. And